All right. Is everyone doing? Hold on. Gotta do a couple of things. So, um, here we are doing some, uh, some Phoenix right tonight. There we go. Oh, my eyes are burning. How's everyone doing tonight? Let's see. I'm gonna get the game to launch up properly. All the... <laughs> it's been a while since we played this game. Like two weeks. Been able to... Part of that was uh, just being so worn out. Part of it was uh, other things. Let's see. I need to. Do something on the PC first. Because we're not getting uh, audio, are we? No, there we go. Cool. So you can hear that, right? I remember what we were doing. <sighs> Time to take on this monkey attorney style. Is. So, we uh, just had the monkey try and snatch something else from us. And we now have to feel funky. So our options are, give it back, monkey brain, stay, or ooh, ooh, ooh. I tried to have a monkey to monkey talk with him. I really did. Nick, you, you. I swiped it while money was distracted. Wow, you really on the ball tonight, Nick. <clears throat> let me see it, let me see it. Huh? You can see it fine from where you are. You know what I mean? I want to really, I really want to try on Regina's costume. Maybe they'll take you in at the circus and I can get some peace and quiet. Hmm. What's the matter now? It doesn't fit me at all. Oh well, I guess it's time for you to lay off the burgers. 
Not to mention, it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. A shiny spangled dress. It's not my size at all. Go, Virginia. Yay, thank you. You really got a bath for me. Don't mention it. Love you, Mr. Attorney. Wash. It's not that. No wonder guys melt to mush in front of this girl. Hey, Regina. That costume is yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't fit me. Huh? This costume? It, uh, this isn't mine. It was Leon. Leon's? You know, the lion she told us about? Oh, the one that someone killed. Leon, he was killed, wasn't he? That's right, my dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down and he opened his mouth, you know. Gah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Usually when he did that, I would put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, you put your head into a lion's mouth? I sure did. People at the crowd always loved seeing me do that. They'd always start screaming. You sure they were screaming because they loved seeing you do that? Anyways. What was the bad thing? <clears throat> oh yeah, Leon bit someone during that practice. R R Regina! Everything was alright though, right? No, it wasn't all right. That was the problem. My dad was incredibly angry. And that's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Poor thing. Leon added to the court record. She not seem bothered at all by that. Mm. Something smells fantastic. So we know it can't be Mo. Wait, I know what it is. It's burgers. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Bistro du Cirque, aka the cafe cafeteria. Mmm, smells so good in here. Those burgers look great. She's drooling like she's some sort of crazed burger monster. My burgers are the best. Juicy meat toasted buns, special sauce. They're absolutely irresistible to anyone with, that, uh, with a hankering for a burger. One bite will send you into the burger heaven. I bet. I can tell by the smell. Whoa, I'm getting hungry too. Those burgers must have some kind of special power. Now that the ringmaster is gone, what are you going to do? That's all I've thought about these past or the past two days. Everyone loved Russell. You heard Agnes' story, haven't you? Like how he was adopted when he was younger? <laughs> He's calmed down. Uh, a bit now, but he was livid when he heard about the murder. Akra was so upset that he said he couldn't go on. He was that upset? Yes, he was. Anyway, I gave it some thought. Maybe I should give up on trying to be a half-baked clown. I've been thinking of trying on the ring buster shoes. What? Really? would still be an issue, though. 
Max? He may be a bit mean and hard to work with, but it's hard to argue his importance. He's probably the reason the circus is still around. A lot of what he says is right. No. All that's left to see is if everyone can get over the tragedy. You know. Tragedy? You know? What is he talking about? Get over what tragedy, no? Huh? Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Nothing at all. You must mean the tragic death of the ringmaster, right? Yes, yes, that's it. You're right, girly. Dang, dang, dang. Correct the moon. Doesn't he mean ding? Mo, I mean no disrespect here, but... Are you lying to us? Uh, no, not at all. What makes you think of that? Just the way you said, if everyone can get over the tragedy seemed a bit strange. It sounds like you were talking about something from a long time ago. No, I'm right, aren't I? So now we're getting closer to the truth. It was about six months ago. It was just a little accident. Give me a break, us old men have accidents. I wear big pants for a reason. Six months ago, huh? No, please tell us what happened six months ago. Regina seems to have gotten over it, though. Uh, what in the world went on at the circus? Okay, okay, there's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there, some juicy burgers. Let's eat instead. Uh, unfortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. Um, actually, I've kind of got an idea of what happened back then. No, you said something about an accident? This wouldn't happen to be the cause of that accident, would it? I heard a little bit about it from Regina. Leon made a mistake during a practice, right? How did you... I told them so many times, you shouldn't be doing such dangerous acts. Like putting her head inside Leon's mouth, right? Yeah, but Regina believed in Leon. She believed so strongly that Ringmaster went along. He could never say no to her. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo, don't clam up on me now. Who did Leon bite on the head? Well, um, I promised I wouldn't say it. But you promised? He's involved in this too. He's involved? Huh? Mo must be talking about. Oh, is this the person you promised you wouldn't say anything? Must have been Akram, right? Uh, how? How'd you know? Don't worry about that, Mo. Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the ringmaster. No. No way. I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please, tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Akram. <sighs> Yay! It's just like you said, you know, the accident. Did someone die? No, but it probably would have been better if he had. What? How could that have? How would that have been better? 
he's still alive. But when he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. He'll never recover from the coma he's in. Coma? All he does now is lie in his bed at the hospital. And that's all he's ever going to be able to do. I see. How is this related to... How is he related to Echo? He's his brother. Huh? The person who got bit was Akra's brother. B brother? <sighs> Excuse me. They were an acrobat team of brothers. Acro? Bat. Cute nicknames, I thought. Anyways, they were an incredible team. Cut together uh, cut down together in their prime. Acro's brother. Akra's younger brother. Sean Dingling. But everyone always called him Bat. He fell in love with Regina. Trying to win her love was his downfall. Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina. Six months ago, while we were practicing, all of a sudden Bat blurs out, let me perform with Leon. Why'd he do that? I don't know, but that's what caused the accident. I'll never forget that moment. It was so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. He was smiling. He? You mean Leon? Yes, Leon. When he bit down, he was smiling. Some sick grin. No way, that's impossible. A smirking lion, a flying murder. Why does it seem like uh why does it seem that it's always Mo who catches all the all these incredible events? Nick, can lions smile? Um uh, never told the police about the incident. The circuit, uh, the circus would have been shut down if we had. The next day, the ringmaster took Leon out and shot him with a rifle. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. But all this truthfulness has put me in the mood for a burger. Here, you two have some pepper. Shaka 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 shaka. There he goes again, acting as normal for himself. Ah, ah, ah! Choo! Nice, what a wonderful sneeze. Huh? You think so? You have sneezed with pepper and slip on a banana peel. Let's face a clam and chip. Girly, I know you got to understand that. <clears throat> Nick, I think I make for a good, uh, make a good clown. Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter sneezer. <laughs> Does Regina sneeze with pepper too? She does. Bat would always tease her with pepper. B Bat? From my point of view, those two always look so perfect together. They look perfect together, huh? What do you think about this person? Sorry. Sorry? I've already given my heart to another man. So I'm not interested in enrolling in your dating service. Huh? I just want to know if you knew this person. <clears throat> what about this? What can you tell me? Um, I'm not really good at figuring out hard things. Really? You too? But you're such a good talker. I never expected I to make a new friend in this in a strange place like this.
Alright, he doesn't know anything. He did say I'll be back. Wait, or was that someone else? We're back because Akra's hiding why his legs were injured. He was hurt in the accident six months ago. It would seem that he know uh, that he knows that we know. Oh well, it seems you've got things you want to talk about. So, fire away. <clears throat> I have to ask, how were you injured? Sorry, I thought we talked about this. It was an accident. It happened during practice. An accident during practice? Yes, unfortunately acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no uh, reason to keep it a secret. Acro, uh, Acro, <laughs> Acro, are you really telling me that a practice accident was the cause of your injury? Alright, Echo, just tell me the truth. Do you mind if I ask you a question first? What do you want to know? I really think that I could get an entry like this from something like that? Yikes! Seems like I'm off track with this one. Hey, if that's how you handle yourself, I suggest a net if you ever try the tightrope. That's right, I slipped up just now. I gotta rethink, think, rethink things. Accent during practice. Yes, unfortunately, acrobats are trying to. I've been confined to this room, so I don't have a clue what's going on with the circle. What do you think of this? I'm sorry, but in my present physical condition, I don't really know much about what goes on outside of this room. Oh, we're sorry. <clears throat> Taking Max in for questioning again. There really isn't anything that we need to ask him right now, anyway. You're right, I guess. All right, let's go then. Think about it, he was he really was a good guy. He truly liked Regina. He would try anything to get her attention. He seemed like a good guy. Back then Acro was always laughing. But I guess that everything backstage at the circus wasn't always or isn't always rosy. I see. It's harder than you think, making people laugh all the time.
He wouldn't know it, but I was responsible for naming all the animals at the circus. You named Money the monkey? And Regent, uh, Regina's tiger? Guilty as charged. But Leon got his name from the ringmaster. Really? You always said, keep names simple and easy to associate. Nick's name is easy to associate, right, right? Uh -huh. I always told Russell, if that's what you think, then call him Lion the Lion. It's a great name, don't you think? Imagine if he, uh, he could talk. I'm Lion. <laughs> But that's when Russell said, don't lie to yourself. That name is awful. Leon. Six months ago, you were attacked by the lion. That's when you were injured. I know I'm on the right track, I just need to keep going. You're saying that I was attacked? By a lion? That's what I'm saying. Sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. And no, I'm no animal tamer. If a lion was coming at me, I'd be running for the exit. Okay, maybe attacked is not the best word to be using. So let me rephrase that as battled the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it. You had to save someone. Bad. It's a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. You tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got that terrible injury. No, he must have told you. Yes, we learned about Bat from Mo. But he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. I suppose it was just a slip of the tongue on, us, on his part. That's how I figured it out. A uh, slip of the tongue? Anyways, they were an incredible team. Cut down together in their prime. Cut down together. That was where he slipped. And that's how I figured it out. You two ended up at the center of the same incident, uh, accident together. Like always. I see. But an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. So I have broken Acro's last cycle. This one, uh, this must be one incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't anyone's fault. Do you care to explain more? Acro, I know you're still hiding something from me. Maybe someone you don't like, uh, seem to like much is the reason you're being evasive? R Regina. You always seem calm and collected until you start talking about her. Saying things like she is cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. You've got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know, her tiger tried to attack me. Regent tried to attack you? Twice. <laughs> he wasn't serious, I'm sure. You're not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred on Leon to attack Bat, are you? Leon was never taught to uh, command to attack people. 
Regina isn't capable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Brat, uh, Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina. I've got proof of it. What? What are you talking about? Oh, maybe I overdid it again. But if I can hand something over to Acro, maybe it'll... Just proof that you had it out for Regina all along. Um... Th this... Where'd you get it? Regina posted it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. Well, I guess I noticed it when uh, it was there around breakfast time. I always take Acro his breakfast in the morning. You wrote this, and then you put it in her pocket. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Well done, Mr. Wright. Hmm. My legs were injured by Leon six months ago. My younger brother, Bat, had, dare, had a dare with Regina. A dare? An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside of Leon's mouth like you do, you have to go to the movies with me on a date. That's insane! Didn't he know how dangerous that is? We all thought he was being stupid too, but that lion was very old to begin with. And age brought with it countless experience in doing that very trick. Unfortunately, this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the uh, and that's when the accident happened. Where the birds are pecking at him, can't tell if they're being cute or like, hey, you dead yet? Maybe both. He just wanted to take her out the movies. Poor bat. When Leon chomped down, I jumped towards him. Then Leon attacked me, and that's how I ended up. What about Bat? He's still in a coma. I went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. I'm still waiting for him to open his eyes again. And that's the reason why I keep going. Bat and Regina. They were such great friends. Oh yeah, I want you to. T uh, oh yeah, I wanted you to take a look at this. What is it? This is the scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. Gross! It's covered in blood. This scarf. It was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the accident. Hmm. Huh. <clears throat> when he did it. He looked like he was smiling. He? Leon, obviously. Oh! When he bit down on Bat's head, the expression on Leon's face looked like a grin. Nick! I know, most said the same thing. What do you think it all means? I'll be taking that scarf if you don't mind. Miss Von Karma? I've already heard everything, so hand over the scarf. But the scarf is evidence in the trial. That's for me to decide. I think we should be uh, begin our preparations now, Acro. Preparations? I've served a summons to Acro to appear in court uh, tomorrow as a witness. Acro? We'll talk more at the prosecutor's office. Akro? A witness? <clears throat> Come, Akro. Let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. Now what do we do, Nick? How are we going to handle tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. 
Look at you, full of confidence. You must have found something you can use. This is all beginning to come together now. I'm imagining Money debating if he's supposed to carry Acro out or chuck Francisca out of the room. December 30th, 9.41 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. Good morning, Max! <clears throat> oh, yeah. Good morning, sweetie. He's... You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. Teehee. Don't get nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie pie, my sweetie pie princess. You came to watch my performance today? Of course I did. Mo told me, told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that. So what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess. Uh, you'll fly at the end? Uh... It's not that kind of show. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't even... Uh, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. Hmm. Well, Max, it looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today, I'm just a member of the audience. But fabulous. Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. <clears throat> Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? Top of the morning to you. Hey, everybody, let's get ready to, uh, to get stuck in legal limbo. How low can you go? Max, you want to uh, propose her? She's kind of different. Yeah. Different. Mo, top of the morning to you, Governor. Uh, top of the morning. That's the ticket. Attacking the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets a worm, but then again, worms like higher brain brain function. <laughs> Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some more. Oh my! Th thanks. So, how are you today, right? Well, I've got a feeling that today I'm going to face off against the real culprit. You mean Akra? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to be uh, putting his entire uh, putting his life on the line, literally. He's got guts to spare. If all I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is, I'm used to it already. It just means that I won't be able to press him like I can other witnesses. What are you going to do then, Nick? I guess today we'll just have to do our usual psychological warfare. Today, we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Acro and to the truth. You're right, but it's going to be tough. Anyways, I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. He wants to make sure Regina watches? Yes, that's why I brought her to, uh, here to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. I may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. This storyline gets dark. Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Miss Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. The 
prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness, or shall I say, a new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. Uh -huh. Order, order. I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to the re uh, this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. <clears throat> An explanation the prosecution will present if needed, so, uh, if the need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene on my orders. Poor Gumshoe. Very well. Please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work. Or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. Name and occupation. Ken Dingling, but everyone calls me Acro. I'm employed as an acrobat at the very big circuits. Were you the night, uh, where were you the night of the crime? <clears throat> I was in my room that night. If you look at the map, you'll see the witness, uh, if you look at the map, you will see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. What I witnessed. <sighs> was just after 10 p.m. And I was ready to, uh, and I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise come, uh, Thump noise from outside the window. Then a few moments I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. <laughs> hmm. This witness's testimony matches up exactly with what they, uh, with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the night sky. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. A man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just like when your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, uh, just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth did. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Miss Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? There's no way that actually happened. Very well. You may proceed with your cross-examination. Uh, let's see. You said that you were resting in bed. One would thus assume that you turned off the lights, uh, turned the lights off in your room, correct? That's correct. But there are safety lights around the outside of the lodging house. It's so bright, sometimes it can make it hard to sleep. If that's the case, wouldn't it be a good idea to close some curtains? I never really thought of that. Guess that means I'm off to buy some curtains. <laughs> Sometimes I do make myself useful in these chambers. No! The witness will proceed with his testimony. Your room is on the third floor, right? Yes. And you said that you were resting in bed. That is correct. But you were still able to hear the sound from outside? I was indeed. 
Pressing accurate doesn't seem to get results. Hmm. But maybe something contradictory. There may. Uh, but maybe some. But maybe something was contradictory in what he said just now. <sighs> There's a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there was a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm. She's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim of contradiction? Um, This. What in the world is this? Oh. You just don't get it, do you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Well, what don't I get? You're not going to be able to get through this one with your usual bluff routine. Your client looks to be ready to take off once again. Straight towards a guilty verdict. You were... Uh, bluffing? I will not forgive any more mockeries made of this court. Oops. Witness, would you mind repeating your testimony? I didn't get penalized. <sighs> right by your window. Are you sure it was a human being? It could have been a mannequin, or perhaps a large action figure. Hmm, well, setting aside the possibility of a mannequin, an action figure is possible. You have no need to mince words with Mr. Phoenix, right? Testify to the truth, and only the truth, just as if we were there with you that night. I believe it was human. Hmm. Damn. I was just strength I just strengthened his testimony. What if Acker's statement jives with the fact? Nothing wrong there. N -n -n nothing, Your Honor. Until I can find a clear contradiction. I should tread lightly. The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. So with the lights off, you were still able to see clearly a uh, still able to clearly see a human fly by your window. The safety lights lit up things enough for me to see, but honestly, there was only enough light for me to see out, uh, see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses. On did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat, as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that person I saw was Max Black. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. But maybe there was something fishy with this latest bit of testimony? N -n -n nothing Your Honor. I can find a clear contradiction. Better not overdo it. When did you start thinking of that what you saw wasn't a dream? That's not important. I believe that the prosecution has done a bit of maintenance on the witness's memory. Memory. Hmm. Just to make sure. Let's ask the witness. Oh. Objection. S sustained. Don't sustain that. Ecker must be lying about what he saw, right? Of course he is. Now the challenge will be to expose his lies in court. Well, put the pedal to the metal, Nick. He can't. He doesn't drive.
There's a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm. She's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim? He said he saw the silk hat. You claim to have seen the exact same thing that Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? <laughs> the silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame because you would have noticed the silk hat found on the scene. That... That's the ringmaster's hat, right? I'm afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max had two silk hats? No. This is handmade, one of a kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means, Acro, that you've been fibbing on the stand. Order, order! As always, it looks like someone has ha just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big now, and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion... Uh, uh, accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. <sighs> Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. <laughs> I think your trips to the circus have served you well. You seem to have learned how to try and grab it at an audience. Try and grab at an audience's hearts and minds. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. <laughs> really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. He's calm enough for it to almost be scary. Staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Dingley, do you have any response to the defense's accusation? I don't really need to say anything, do I? What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at it. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the logic box. That, that's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But... To do this by accusing me of a murder of all things. See, even a sliver of common sense makes it clear that the accusation is ludicrous. He's right, why you pick on the disabled do you heartless cruel man? Phoenix is appropriate! See that, Mr. Phoenix, right? If you're trying to drum up support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Uh. I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note to confirm that Acro is unable to stand with his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter this as well. I can hear the defense now. Acro has an accomplice. What do you say about this, uh, Mr. Wright? Did Agro have an accomplice? It seems impossible for Acro to be the murderer in this case. If that's the case, then it's natural for one to consider possible accomplices. Hmm, you don't say. 
Not good, not good. This isn't going to end well. Don't tell me you think you're going to get off easy. But what? You must not have heard that sound just now. Maybe it wasn't clear enough. The sound of you falling into your own trap can be heard to uh can be hard to notice sometimes. Mr. Wright, it seems as if you won't be stopping at Acro, but we'll make it, be making uh, other accusations. If Acro did not have an accomplice, things are not looking good for you. I understand, Your Honor. Ooh. Very well. Let's continue. Who, perchance, would have uh, would happen to be Acro's accomplice? You, you don't say. Uh-oh, this is suddenly looking very, very bad. Don't tell me you think you're going to get off easy. What? What? what, what? Oh, did you hear that? Hear what? The sound of you getting caught in your own trap. What a splendid accomplice. I'm sure this accusation is built on solid foundation. Foundation? Yes, Mr. Wright. Do you have any proof that this person you've accused is indeed an accomplice? Uh... This piece of evidence is lacking in persuasive power. You didn't miss that sound, did you, Mr. Phoenix, right? You know, the sound of you receiving a penalty. God, I hate this. No. We didn't have an accomplice. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. What? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering on about, Mr. Wright? <clears throat> there was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Uh, order. Order. What the... What are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick. Now, I'm going to have to prove how all this fits. Uh, now I'm going to have to prove how all this fits together. I have to show how Acro murdered uh, Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. Alright, then let's do this. Mr. Phoenix Wright, if this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Hmm. Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, where exactly was Mr. Dingling? Is he was obviously here the entire time. That's Acro's room? Pretty simple, eh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingley? It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering what you proposed is impossible. Yes, that's it. Uh, 
Hmm. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there's no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. Hmm. You've got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. <clears throat> Mo said he saw Max, didn't he? But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask you a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, do you think I killed uh, How do you think I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm. How did he do it? That's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here. She's right. I can't mess up here. I've got to give this one some serious thought. I'm sure that Acro killed the ringmaster, and he did it while he was in his room. No doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the murder, Mr. Wright. Uh, so, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here. So, what did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Perry? What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a large bust, and that's because it is life-sized, and is also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death, and especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. See, this is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster, with the force of gravity and Maximilian's ample bust. Oh yeah. <laughs> order, order. So you're saying the bust fell onto the Ringmaster? Uh, rather, rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. <clears throat> Could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible. Well, Acro is an acrobat. He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bus. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond with these charges? Well... Acro's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Mr. Acker. I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get a proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm. Testimony, you say? Okara. She's just using this testimony as a ruse to stall for time. There's absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't he see things my way once in a while? Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems, however, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. Ah, that woman will sink to any low to win a case. Acro's physical state. I suppose I could have lifted, some, lifted something the size of that boss. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat. 
and my own, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus, it would be unreal unrealistic to drop a bust on him, don't you think? Hmm. I have no doubts in regards to this testimony, uh, witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Mm. I can't let her get, uh, get to me. I've got to focus. Acro's physical state. Acro, you didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I might, uh, I may add. Objection. Your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling. I'll let you show us some evidence. But, but I did such a good job at, uh, did such a good job, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the victim was found, uh, the same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over. The same. Question is, who placed the wooden box there? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding a wooden box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bus came falling down was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... If the bus were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that it could m miss the head of the victim. No. Order, order, order. This is unbelievable. Finally, something of uh, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now we just gotta keep going. And there's only one way to go from here. Forward. So the next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope. Then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow. Allow me to whip some sense into you. Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ow, 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 ow. The ringmaster's head could not have been anywhere. Uh, could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. So specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar feature. <clears throat> the box has a remarkable weight. Wait. According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down, and then lift with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box has, also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That's correct. To lift the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means... 
No matter who you are, your head would be approximately in the same place. Foo. Does he even bother li to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. You? You? Did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you call, recall the original location of Max's bust? I remember. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm. Then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bust from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bust from the cafeteria to my room? <sighs> you see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that. Don't forget, you said it was no. Uh, there was no accomplice. Mm. us exactly how the witness would have carried the bust up from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happened once and for all. Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the best from the cafeteria back to his room? With the help of a monkey, of course. <laughs> hey. Monkey. Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, just like when he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness uh, had the monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room. But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. I guess the monkey got busted. How's it going, Jared? Uh, maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards you sold. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Ah! Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Just say I like this version of Von Karma more. <laughs> order, order. I said order. Miss Von Karma, where is the bust in question at this moment? Um, 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 I, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Hmm, this is a rather strange dirt of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as a murder weapon. Hmm. Wait. Then you mean the bus was a murder weapon by pure accident? It's possible. Maybe Akira saw Money's Mountain of Stolen Goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acker was the murderer. Moron. Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, 
His argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow. Don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of the magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ah! There's no reason to doubt this clown's uh, the clown's testimony. That's true. Uh, that, that's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. <clears throat> when the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Bear, and the other was the murderer himself. <laughs> I just saw the amount of damage I'll take if I mess this up. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Um, answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the uh, who was the murderer the clown saw? Was the bus? He saw Max's but Ow! I asked who was the other person Mo saw on the scene. The evidence has nothing to do with the question. Objection. Oh, contraire, mon frère. Shh, uh, it does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. How is this? Is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo saw actually... Uh, what Mo actually saw that night was Max's bus. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain in, at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. <clears throat> There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bus. It would be easy to hang one off of the cars in the bus sands. Idiot! Who in the right mind would put a cloak on the bus? It doesn't matter who put it on a bus or on the bus. Just a minute now. Mr. Wright, who put the cloak on the bus? That question is of the utmost important importance in this case, don't you agree? Oh, he got me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bust? Okay, hear me out. This is crazy. He was wearing the cloak, right? Because people mistook him for Max. F -f fool Him? You are saying that the victim himself? Uh, it was the victim himself? Russell Perry? That's what I'm saying. I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust. Mm, place the cloak isn't really the white, right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself. Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all, to, uh, putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. <clears throat> all right. So, you wanted to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. Akra used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bus and dangled the bus out of his bedroom window, directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone recognizing him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house by none other than a ventriloquist and his Ben uh, and his puppet, Ben and Trilla. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over the lift uh, to lift the wooden box. 
And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now, this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bust hit the victim, Just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting up so upset, Miss Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. What? The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. The impact also caused the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Moe Curls, the clown. When Moe looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went, up, uh, went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea Moe saw the bust, but raising it, uh, uh, of course, he had no idea that Moe saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it, primarily because in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window, so he just kept pulling the bust up. And that is how the magical murderer disappeared into the sky, or disappearing into the sky, came to be. So, you see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro, it could have only been you. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us. He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. Do you have any evidence to prove your fairy tale is true? I evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they want, uh, say they want evidence. I just explained how there can only be one possible murder weapon. But there is still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A uh, contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Let's uh, uh, use that and get us out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claims. Uh, no. Save. Okay. Now, yes. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magical case.
What thing is it? I'll picture the bust. Not the note. The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the poke, the white roses. <laughs> Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Mo's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all three of these con uh, all of these contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Moe said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Moe saw was actually the busts. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine. You've got, uh, you've got one. But what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what he's, uh, what that ventriloquist said in court? He said that the witness, uh, that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said, uh, the clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like you to try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bus. If the cloak snagged onto the bus, what would happen to the white roses? Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bus, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bus. Ah. I'm not sure this is, isn't as likely to try and murder. <laughs> Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bus. Order! Order! Ah, this is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Maybe then Von Karma will finally throw in the towel. Nope. Nope. Well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? 
If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relationship to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there's absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Akra's story. Not about his relationship with, uh, with the ringmaster and his life up until now. Well, what do we do? There's no doubting that Akra is deeply respecting the ringmaster. Akra's motive. Hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a ten-minute recess. I know. What, Loki? I see you've turned your back on me. I can't believe it. Acro? It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is, and I think he was always the most straightforward of the group. Achievus, am I that hated? Damn. Akra tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... he did? S -s -s <laughs> but... but I'm nothing but a big... a little nobody, you know? But you're not, which is kind of the reason why... <clears throat> hey. Hey, pal. You're not gonna ignore me after I went through all this. I uh, went to all this trouble to bring you some evidence. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. Ah, forget it. I'm going home. <laughs> this guy deserves to be guilty anyway. No, no, Detective. I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax? You've got some really tasty milk. How? How about a nice car trick, Detective? Ha ha ha! Well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned, what is it? Here you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Akra's room. Yeah, and I have included the forensics results. Take a look at it later. Well, this phone karma be mad you're doing this. That's why this is all a secret. Huh? Look, details are on a need-to-know basis, and we're not... Uh, uh, really allies or anything. But everything's uh, everything that's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. I don't know. This from Kermit doesn't seem to be in control of things in there just now. You'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday, our final plans were set into motion. Final plans? Uh-huh. That reminds me. I got a message from, a, from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. What did he mean by that? The very end part? I'm not sure. It's all pretty cryptic to me. Ow. One more thing. Ah! Don't scare me like that. It looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. The reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So oh, hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. The entire dairy's worth of milk for me. <laughs> Court is now back in session. Miss Funker, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akra's testimony, starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. 
proof of what kind of motive Acker would have to uh, would have to commit the uh, this crime. Understood. Now, Mr. Dingley. Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Ooh. Oh boy. When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the ringmaster of the very big circus, Russell Berry, took us in. I became an acrobat at around nine years old. Okay, Dick Grayson. I wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. Hmm. You're such a thoughtful young man. As you've heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could think Acro would kill the man he held in such esteem. You're absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Which is why there's no real need for cross-examination. Is there? Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the ringman? This might be my last chance to answer that question. The defense has the right to cross-examine the witness. Hm, you're so tactless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You don't care about justice, do you? You just want to fabricate a motive. Very well, Mr. Wright. Cross-examine the witness. About the ringmaster. We? Yes, my brother Sean and I. What? You have a brother? How old were you when this happened, Akra? I was eight years old and my brother was four. Hmm. Your parents were very cruel, weren't they? Nowadays, we aren't bitter about what happened to us. Because it allowed us to meet the wonderful people at the very big circus. Nick, the judge is getting misty-eyed. He's got a soft spot for sob stories, it looks like. Oh! No crying in court. Let's keep going. <laughs> the witness may proceed with his testimony. <laughs> uh, how would you describe your relationship with the Ringmas? He was like an uncle, a father, and a big brother all rolled up into one. Ringmaster and my brother were our the only family I had. Hmm. What about the other people at the circus? Hmm, this was over 15 years ago. Back then, there was very few customers coming in. So no one really had the time to look after us. Uh, they were worried about other things. But the ringmaster, he would always come to see us with a laugh and a smile. What a beautiful story. That's why I was always thinking of what I could do to help. I wanted to thank him. Isn't Akra such a wonderful person? I know, he seems like a nice guy. Which is what makes this so difficult. Hmm. So then, how long have you been a performer? You started off as an acrobat at uh, that early of an age? I begged the ringmaster until he finally agreed to let me do it. Ever since then, I've been in incredible physical shape. That's also when I decided to form a group with my brother. We called ourselves the Flying Dingling Berries.
<laughs> that is a terrible name. <laughs> it's nearly a household name. I've even heard of them in Germany. Liar. The point is that I wanted to be of some use to the circus. Hmm. You truly are a remarkable young man. Localizers are indeed cruel. The judge keeps looking at Akro, almost like a proud father. Hmm. I wanted to find her. <laughs> Did you ever have any trouble with the ringmaster? Ow! How could you ask, ask such a thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have some sort of fundamental misunderstanding of this witness's testimony? Or the heartfelt emotions contained within? You'd better think about this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You'd better think hard. Ow, 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 Hmm, no matter how you look at it, there's no way I could see a witness, uh, this witness ever taking the victim's life. Exactly. I've been waiting for you to say that, Your Honor. I, I hate to say it, but I agree with them. I started trying to chase down the truth, but I just ended up looking like a jerk. I think that will be enough for now. Pondering whether or not this man would kill the ringmaster leads me to believe that... It's pretty unlikely. Exactly right, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you one question. Go ahead, Your Honor. I would just like to know. Can you provide an exam explanation as to... Why Acro would want the ringmaster dead? Uh, I think this is one of those cases where you say no. Because there isn't actually a motive that exists. Nick? Yeah, I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor, the reason that Acro killed the ringmaster is something that can't be proven. What? That's because Acro had no reason to kill the ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool us like foolish fools is so foolhardedly foolish. Did you forget? You made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was. This is the real killer of Russell Berry, ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yes, that sounds about right. The end of things? Acro, you didn't plan to kill the ringmaster at all, did you? The ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What did you just say? I'm s I'm saying the target of the witness's murder plot was not the ringmaster. <clears throat> because it was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. What? Order. Order. Bailiff, I don't care who it is. Smack anyone who's loud enough in the face. Twice, if you must. Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to my court? Ah. Oh. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to, the, to his court? Are you attempting to imply that Akko was trying to kill somebody else? Gina Berry? This young girl is the ringmaster's daughter, correct? Akra. You were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? You don't need to answer that. It's a meat spirited leading question. He could easily answer this question. If I'm wrong, all he has to say is. You're wrong. That's it. That's it, huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough. Mr. Wright, allow me to. Oh. The only thing allowed to, uh, only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. Oh. And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence, now. I want to know. I want to know why Acro would kill Regina Berry. Yeah, yeah. Yes, me too. I demand to see some proof. 
Present evidence that Pierce Acro was out to kill this young girl. Um... Acro, you remember this, don't you? That's... It's a piece of paper that we found inside Regine, uh, uh, inside the Ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat? Acro wrote this note. Ironically, it's entitled, Who the Murderer? His purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. So you're saying that he called Russell Berry with that note? Yes, but there's just one little problem. Problem? Acro did indeed place this note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean, it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other than... Regina Barrett. <clears throat> Order, order, order. M Mr. Wright, this little theory of yours. It's the truth, Your Honor. It isn't a theory. Simply put, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why, the morning of the crime, she placed it on the cafeteria bulletin. That's when her father, I mean the ringmaster, saw the note. That's correct. The ringmaster ended up in that plaza instead of Regina. And he was killed because of a mistake. Instead of Regina. That's... that's... that's incredible. Remember the testimony that Acro gave us earlier today. Lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. If I were to do that, I'd end up falling out the window myself. Acro had no idea who it was that arrived in the plaza, because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. I've got it, I've got it. Acro thought it was Regina down in the plaza. And that's when he let the bus fly. Hey, Nick? Isn't Regina listening to all this from the audience? She is. Unfortunately, it's going to get harsher from here. I hope Regina can handle it. Nope. Well, maybe. She's a bit of a dit. Uh, Acro. Uh, Acro wrote this note to Regina. <laughs> foolishly foolish fool with foolishly foolish fool ideas of foolish tomfoolery. You're so foolish you've even made me sound like a foolhardy fool. <laughs> wow, I'm super cool if people are talking about me. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, if you're so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Yes, what about that line? Well, if the note was meant for Regina Berry, it would mean that this note is declaring Regina Berry is a murderer. You just don't get it, do you? What? What did you say? The ringmaster knew what the note meant, which is why he went to the plaza, in place of his lovely daughter. But hold it right there, Mr. Wright. What is this in incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. I know all about it. An incident occurred six months ago. Now that I am more... Uh, and now I am more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Moron! Wait, are you sure that it relates to the prison case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case has its start in what happened six months ago. Really, Nick? I, um... think so? Well then, if that's the case, hurry up and tell us about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in the note? I know I'd certainly like to know what it is. 
If I can't answer that question, the judge is going to think I'm blind. Inclusive evidence about the evidence six months ago is actually... Well, um, I kind of figured I'd try to get rid of evidence I didn't need anymore. Uh, almost the big climax of this case, which means that no matter what I'm... What? I can't mess up again. Inclusive evidence about the incident six months ago is actually... What kind of a spicy joke is this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? It isn't a joke at all. It's the decisive evidence you asked for. What, what, what do you mean? Recall that the victim was trying to take the wooden box away with him. He was doing so because this piece of decisive... Uh, this is the piece... He was doing so because this piece of decisive evidence is what was inside. <laughs> Another unbelievable conclusion. Very well, Mr. Wright. So, what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Berry killed someone with a small bottle of pepper? Taking the note into account, it's the only logical conclusion you could draw. Oh, foolish fool who never tires of his own foolish ways. If you're so sure, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then answer this question. Who is Regina Berry's intended victim? Who is this? That is Akro's younger brother. What does this prove? His younger brother isn't dead. Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months. It's not a stretch to see how Acro can feel that his brother is dead. Regina? She did that to him? Did you spend your entire life dreaming up new ways to be a fool? Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Acro's brother, Sean Dingling. <coughs> six, mo six months ago, he was bit by a lion and fell into his current com comatose state. A l l lion Regina, I mean, Miss Regina Berry, is an animal tamer by trade. However, no tamed animal in that position has ever trained, uh, is ever trained to attack another human. They wouldn't understand the command. Moreover, Miss Regina could never do something like that. It's not just in her. Or it's just not in her. Hmm. So then, what happened to Akro's brother? He's not the victim of an attempted murder. He's the a victim of an accident. I see. Now what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bat was actually an accident? There's more than that. <laughs> the lion biting Bat was no accident at all. W what? You're such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix Wright. There's no way that Regina would ever incite her lion to attack another human being. She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being, but Regina is responsible for making the lion fight Agra's brother. Bat. That's... that's just a score. Acro. This scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who's the one that gave this scarf to Bat? Re Regina. Regina gave it to him. <laughs> Regina. There's something more than just blood on the scarf, right? And what might that be? Pepper. 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 Regina gave this scarf to Bat right before the accident, and she covered with covered it with as much pepper as she could. It was with the silent treatment. Bonk, bonk, bonk. 
Bong. 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 Um, excuse me, Mr. Wright. You've just done a good job of fingering a criminal. But out of curiosity, what was her crime? Um, Miss Berry gave a pepper-covered scarf to Bat as a present. Where is the crime in that? It seems like the judge just doesn't get it. Mr. Phoenix Wright, being a moron, wasn't it said that the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? Lion was smiling. Right before Bat was bit by the lion. For a moment, the lion's mouth changed and it looked like he was smiling. Lions smile? I've never heard of them smiling, however. Lions sneeze. <laughs> Leon wasn't. Leon wasn't trying to bite Bat at all. In reality, what he actually did was sneeze. He sneezed because of all the pepper on the scarf. Whoa, 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 what? You fool. You've got to be kidding me. What's the matter, Miss Von Karma? I, I, I object. For objection's sake. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you, this theory, you believe it? You really intend to say that this is how this joke of an accident actually happened? Of course I do. It's the truth. The lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Akro nearly lost his brother due to this accident, or this joke, as you put it. Which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot! <laughs> it almost does seem like a terrible joke, doesn't it? Once again, I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. To think that there's someone who treats this accident with the respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I said was true? Akra, you don't mean, you can't mean, witness? Uh, are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright, unfortunately your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pepper, the scarf, the lion. <laughs> Uh, I see where you're going, but it's a bit hard to swallow. Not to mention the fact that there's an even bigger problem with your theory. What would that problem be? The same problem it's always been. Evidence. If I dropped Max's bust on top of the ringmaster, where is the evidence that proves that claim? Um, hmm. You mean the conclusive evidence? The biggest problem is the murder weapon, or the lack thereof, to be more precise. Murder weapon. The bust that the defense claims was used. If that were to be found in Actor's room, and if it were covered by the victim's blood, that would be awfully uh, conclusive evidence in my eyes. Yes, it would be. Bust. Nick, you've got to do something. This is the last step. If I can get this one right, the case is won. It might be worthwhile to search Jacko's room, but... Well, why aren't you going to search his room? It looks like you finally figured things out, didn't you? Not that you know the true meaning of on karma total justice. I guess I figured with you that's the least I should expect. You'd leave no stone unturned. Avon Karma never leaves anything to chance. 
We already searched Ecker's room yesterday. Well, what did you find? There's no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in that room, Ecker would not be here as a witness. But to put a point on it, Max's bust was not in the room. The murder weapon is still unaccounted for. You see, Mr. Wright, the bust wasn't in my room. Furthermore, Detective Dick Gumshoe executed the search by complete surprise. And we took Acro directly into the prosecutor's office after that. End of story. J just wait a second. Something's funny about all this. <laughs> it looks like you lack the final nail to put it into my coffin. But, but, what about the scarf? What about the note? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only evidence that is relevant here is that which pertains to the death of the ringmaster. You should know that by now. Uh, do something, Nick. Don't let, don't let this case slip away. The bust, where is it now? Hmm, where is the bust right now? You're Phoenix Wright. You know what the uh, where that bust is. I'm sure you do. There's not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bust is? It's in the court. It seems this case is coming to a close. The defense's counter-arguments look to have fallen short. Thank you for your support. Ah. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Ray. I think that brings to an end the cross-examination of this witness. Where is Max's bust? The defense needs time to prepare uh, to present its lace. I mean, case. Sorry, I'm nervous and uh, just bit my tongue. What? What? We need time to do what? Ow! Why are you? Why are you the most surprised person here? She's your aide, isn't she? Do Do you really have a a case to present, Mr. Wright? What? Are you asking me? This is up to you, Nick. Good luck. Hey, wait, you can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the line, don't they? That's how Acrobats lives his life up until now. Now it's time for us to, uh, to walk across our own tightrope. If we don't, we're certain to lose. Very well, the defense may proceed. Uh, he doesn't have a clue and I don't think he'll be finding one anytime soon. Walking the tightrope of logic. There's no room for a false step. Sink or swim, the only way through is forward. The murder weapon? Where is Max's bust now? I said that exact line. Jeez. I'm gonna get some water and then we'll hit it. <laughs> It's somewhere in this courtroom. It's obvious the bus is inside this very courtroom.
Oh, Judge, don't act so surprised. We come up with crazy theories all the time. That have absolutely no right being in the courtroom. Um, it, it's obviously where? <clears throat> Allow me to pinpoint the location of the bus once and for all. <clears throat> Acro. I'm sorry to ask this, but do you mind if I take the blanket off your wheelchair? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy, and you have a pretty big wheelchair because of it. I just wanted to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me that it'd be really easy to say, hide a bust under there. <laughs> Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Ray. I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bus is under there. We all know that you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenient when Miss Von Karma happened to search your room yesterday. If she found the murder weapon in your room, it would be all it would have been all over. Which is why you had to hide it in the only place that you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. Which is why, Acro, I have to ask you again. Would you please remove the blanket from your lap? Well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. You... You fool! How could you... You got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. Actually, two of them. Two of them? Miss Francisca von Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch a surprise search on my room last night? There were two pieces of decisive evidence, the cloak and the bust. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. Regina always took my trash out every morning, you know. But the bust... Obviously, I can throw it that way. When you executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. The only... And the only place that I could hide it quickly was under this wheelchair. Miss Von Karma, you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now to be caught uh, and now to be caught in the middle of the court hiding the murder weapon. There's no way I can escape that. So, you've got me. Well done, Mr. Ray. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm, it all makes sense now. He's giving Francisco way too much credit. Yeah. But, uh, whatever. He can give her the credit. It's fine. I can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's a, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. You definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. I can't believe it. Me? Make a mistake? Why did I order a surprise search of you? If only I hadn't done that. It seems we finally arrived at the truth. Acro. Yes, Your Honor? Did you kill the ringmaster of the Big Berry 
of the Berry Big Circus, Mr. Russell Berry. Yes, Your Honor. I'm responsible for that crime. Acro. All my brother wanted was for Regina to like him. That's why he'd tease her. One day, my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started sneezing so hard, you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it would thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. And that's why she covered the scarf with pepper. I know she didn't mean it for anything bad to happen. I know this. She just wanted to make her brother sneeze a few times, too. But I just couldn't forgive her, no matter what. What am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never, ever being able to understand her. Your brother became a star. Regina believes that so purely. That she would laugh innocently when saying it. Too innocently. I just couldn't stand it, no matter how hard I tried. That's when you decided to do something about Regina. How dreadful. So are you saying that you are the victim in all of this as well? No, that's not what I meant. I'm nothing but a murderer. That's who I am. At first, I thought I'd kill myself. Then, I pondered giving myself up. But I couldn't just up and leave. I ju just couldn't. Not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. I just... I just... I just couldn't up and leave yet. This has been such a strange case. It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me again. I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. Thus, I'd like to declare my verdict. Not guilty! Yay! This court is adjourned. December 30th, 427 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 5. <laughs> Fabulous! But, to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Acro, the Ringmaster, Regina, and Bat. A single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question. And one I don't know the answer to. <clears throat> Many congrats, but only at max a million of them. Th thank you. What's with the vibe in the room? We're just thinking about Acro. No, 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 no. If you worry about people too much, then you'll be like this forever. And never be happy. Huh? Uh. <laughs> She's been like this for a while now. It's all my fault! S -s Sweetie, Sweetie Pie. That and Acro, they're never coming back. Now, now everyone's gonna split up. <clears throat> Regina? Mr. Wright, tell me something. What do you want to know, Regina? 
Cooper said something right at the end. I just couldn't up and leave yet. <clears throat> Does that mean Acro? Is he gonna get his revenge on me? He's not gonna do that to you, Regina. Are you sure? You're really sure? I can believe that? Yep. Macro doesn't have any desire for revenge anymore. If that's true, then I want to see some evidence. Hmm? I want to know you're not just making that stuff up about Macro not wanting revenge. So what about this? Now do you understand there's no need to worry? No one ever tells me the truth. No one ever tells me what's going on. Don't. Oh, looks like I made a mistake with that one. Poor Regina. Hey, Mac. <clears throat> what is it, though? We really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? I'm sorry about what happened. So, whatever you'd like to leave us, I'll pay you for your, uh, pay your fee and rip up the contract. I understand. What a fabulous thing to do. I might even leave tomorrow. What's going to happen to the circus now? <clears throat> ah, that's the big question. Our ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Even though he's not here anymore. Everyone is sticking together. The staff, the performers, no one wants to leave the circus. That's why I've made a decision. What is it? I've decided that I will take over as the new ringmaster. I'll turn this circus into the best circus this world has ever seen. The best circus the world has ever seen. D don't, don't laugh. That's quite the goal. Yay, I can't wait. Then I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus in the world has ever... Uh, there's only one thing the best circus in the world... Uh, there's only one thing the best circus the world has ever seen needs. The world's best illusions. Which means this circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max, let's work together and all and make our circuits super fabulous. What do you say, big guy? I don't know what to say. All I can say is thank you. Um, Regina, you're gonna help out them out too, aren't you? Um, I don't know. Maybe this circus would be better off without me. What are you talking about, Regina? Why do you think I brought you to court today? Um. We've got to work together to make Barry Big Circus bigger than it's ever been. Mo. Mo's right, sweetie pie. It can't be the Barry Big Circus without Regina Barry. Max. Nick. It seems like uh, it seems like everything is going to turn out all right here. 
can't wait to go see the best circus in the world has ever seen. We'll save the most fabulous seats. It'll take us a while to get ready, but I'm gonna... Uh, I'm going to order special whoopee cushion seats. <laughs> uh. We made the cakes. Yesterday, surprise right. It really paid off, just like you said it would, sir. Um, you had it all figured out, didn't you? It's just a theory. If Akru really was the killer, I thought this was the only way it could end. Especially if he was the defense attorney. You mean Mr. Wright? Of course. Well, it's about to As for Mr. Acker's case, I plan to personally stop by the Chief Prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. Understood, sir. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. He just has a super in denial boyfriend. <laughs> Save progress up to this point. Yeah, I messed up on the Regina evidence, but <sighs> now the moment you've all been waiting for, it will be this year's Grand Prix Tramp Champ. Who will be our hero of heroes? Will it be last year's runner up? Or maybe kept in sight pan all the way from the tropical islands? I see the students of the Starry School are wearing to win. Global hero Onyan Kopan. I can't keep up with this. We hope Lee Luck is with all of us tonight. And now, winner of the third annual Hero of Heroes Grand Prix. Is me. Whoa, the tree. Okay. You gonna let me actually read these things or no? This like this year's Grand Prix goes to the Nickel Samurai. Too bad, Jabba Ninja. Looks like the title eluded you again this year. Fear of Longinus was on the moon. Second best case. March 20th, 7.42 p.m. Gatewater Hotel. Voila Hall. Oh, right. Yes. Did you hear that, Nick? Did you? The Nickel Samurai. He did it. Yeah, he sure did. <sighs> I'm getting too old for this. I'm proud of the guy for doing the series justice. Um, so, the person everyone was cheering for, I guess he got the prize? Yep. You know, we're, uh, you know who we're talking about, right? The Nickel Samurai. No, every Sunday I only watch educational channels, Kids Masterpiece Theater. Okay, that's it. From now on, it's the Nickel Samurai. All, ki all the kids watch it. Do you like the Nickel Samurai too, Mr. Nick? Nah, Nick's an old fart, so he's not allowed to watch it anymore. That's right, but I do like Kids Masterpiece Theater. Hey, I know you. Uh, I didn't know you were so young at heart, Nick. Mr. Nick, you're a grown-up. You're not allowed to watch it anymore. You're supposed to act your age and have interests that match. It's very important. Ah, uh, give it a rest, Pearly. Looks like I made the right choice in inviting everyone here. I'm glad you're all having a good time. Ah, it's like a dream. Too bad for Jam and Ninja, though. Last year, he lost to the Pink Princess, warrior of little old Tokyo. I thought this might be his year. Oh, hey, did anyone 
else think that Jim and Ninja looked a bit different today? Different? What do you mean? Um, well, he wasn't carrying his bright red guitar. Hey, you're right. Strange, uh, strange he'd walk around without his signature guitar. Hmm, I will never understand these people in their shows. Anyway, Mr. Powers, thank you uh, very much for today. Ah, it was nothing. I owe you one. So it's just my way of saying thanks. Hey, Nick, come on. It's time to get going to the lobby. There's a post ceremony stage show that's supposed to start up very soon. And then I hear there's going to be a press conference after that. A press conference? Is he going to make a speech about winning this year's prize? Ah, uh, well, not exactly. Something about Nicholas Samurai confessing something. Confessing? That sounds pretty serious. Ah, Nick, come on. You don't want to be the last one there, do you? Yeah, Nick. Do you? Why me? The show doesn't even serve for another 20 minutes. Thank you very much for inviting us to that. Ah, there's nothing really. Guys like us don't get to come to a place like this very often, so I thought I'd invite you all. Hey, Mr. Powers, what have you been up to lately? Well, since the Pink Princess successfully wrapped up last month, I've been on a kid's exercise show while wearing a rabbit mask over my face. Oh, I see. I'm still really sorry about all the headache I caused you that, uh, that time, Mr. Wright. Eh, well, what's done is done, so let's forget about it. This is Will Powers. He's an action star. His popularity exploded when he was the Steel Samurai, and he was the first case Maya worked on with me. It's too bad you look scary, or people know what your real so uh, know your real softy who's good with kids. Um, thanks. <laughs> I can't believe they're going to make a movie based off the Nickel uh, based on the Nickel Samurai. I can't believe it either, but for a different reason. The Nickel Samurai and uh, the Steel Samurai, an epic story of one hero in a desperate fight against his arch nemesis, the evil magistrate in the city of New Old Tokyo. And last year, they started a new series, The Nickel Samurai. The new series seems to be a hit with kids too. I'm really attached to the Steel Samurai as a show, so I was hoping that maybe I'd get, <clears throat> I'd get a chance to do something in this new one. Yeah, it's too bad. It's been some uh, it's been awesome to see you with the new actor, uh, Matt Engard. He's super popular right now. Oh, this case. Oh, boy. Mm, Mr. Engard? Looks like Pearls doesn't know who he is. This year, it's going to be Nickel Samurai versus the Jam and Ninja at the box office. Jam and Ninja? Who's that again? So who's this Jam and Ninja again? He's a hero, duh. His symbol is the bright red guitar he's always carrying. A ninja who's always carrying around a bright red guitar? How's that even work? <clears throat> With a scarf around his neck and a guitar in hand, he rises to stardom in an ancient time. A ninja who becomes a star? Yeah, a ninja who becomes a star. There's a strong rivalry between the two of them. Global Studios, uh, Nickel Samurai, and Worldwide Studios, Jam and Ninja. They even air at the same time. You know what I heard? I heard that I heard those two don't get along at all. The Nickel Samurai is on guard, and the guy who plays Jam and Ninja, I mean. Nickel Samurai speaks French? Oh, you mean Matt Ongard, the actor. Uh, I guess even the world of heroes isn't a sparkling happy place. It, yeah. Am 
March 20th, Gatewater Hotel, hallway. Wow, what's with this place? Looks like I've stumbled into Oz or something. Way in the back, there's a sign for the bathroom. Maybe I should visit it while we, uh, while I can before the show starts. There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says, Juan Corita. Juan Corita. His name sounds just like a star's name. I've heard it before, but I don't think, uh, but I don't know anything about him at all. There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says Matt and Guard's room. Matt and Guard. I've heard that name before. Oh yeah, Maya's always yammering about him like uh, the obsessed fan she is. There are toilets in each room in this hotel. But since all sorts of events are held here, there are bathrooms for people who aren't staying, uh, staying here to use as well. Perfect for people like me who can't afford to stay here in the first place. Compared to the flowers on the other side of the hall, these are much more gorgeous. Let's see. Record companies, fan clubs, company workers, family. Carrying all these flowers home would be hard, I think. You're Mr. On Guard from Global Studio staff. Ah, it'd be nice if lawyers got flowers too. Something like, to Mr. Wright, from all your grateful clients. Sounds like the post-ceremony show is about to start. All right, I'm so pumped. I wonder if he's going to show off his special move today. Nickel Samurai smelting. Actually, what I'm interested in most is the press conference. You mean the big confession Nickel Samurai Scott uh, going to make after the show? So, what is it? Don't you want to know what, uh, what it's about, Mr. Powers? Uh... Well, I'm not the Steel Samurai anymore, so I don't have any idea. Ugh. S sorry. Ah, so, I guess you're all going to the press conference then? Yeah, of course. If that's the case, then here, take these tickets so you can get it. <laughs> tickets added to the court record. Thank you very much. Well, let's get going to the lobby. Looks like it's over this way, Mr. Nick. Okay, for great justice. Uh, move. Back to the lobby. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Hmm. Only a really gaudy hotel would have such a large, gaudy lobby to match. Ah, I think they're going to have post Samaroni show over there. They're using a compact stage, I see. Oh, I'm all... Of, uh, oh, I'm all ready to use my special samurai power. Maya looks like she's ready to start a fight. Your attention, please, your attention, please. The Nickel Samurai's post Samaroni stage show will not be held tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. What? Why? Ow. You didn't have to pinch me. Pinch yourself if you don't believe it. <laughs> we are asking for everyone's cooperation at this time. So please, stay where you are. This is a special request from the police. Oh. Police? Did they just say, the police? Do, do you want me to go check out what's going on? Um, wait, I'll come with you. Freeze! You two, didn't you hear the announcement just now? It's not, uh, it just finished telling you not to move. Th that voice, I've heard that voice somewhere before. Oh, no, it wasn't Gumshoe. Damn it. Okay, we're gonna take a quick little break and then we'll reveal who's in the uh, weird mask. This one. You turn that down this instant. No. What? What? Mm. What? 
Do not stand at my grave and ah! I am not there. I did not die. No. <laughs> Like, I know the solution is just hard to execute, and I'm okay with that. I'm surprised you weren't able to get down there with that amazing portal technology. It's pretty strange how those portal guns work. I mean, it combines the top scientific processes of our time. Portal guns contain a uh, flux quantum generator, which propels energy blasts, which, uh, with energy values of 4.23 gigawatts with an average speed of approximately 25 meters per second. The speed is most optimal because it allows the energy to be conserved while still maintaining a speed that is appropriate. The external plastic casing of the portal gun is constructed of a high polymer fireproof carbon fiber. This prevents the intense energy of the portal gun from burning the hands of the user. This intense energy causes intense heat. Oh, by the way, if you want an achievement, click here. I've heard that uh, scientists still do not know what happens if two portals are placed on top of one another. The last time that was attempted, well, I'm sure you heard about that on the- Hey boss, found you. Good. Hermes, at your service. Pleasure. You are the talk of Olympia. Okay. You can see him breathing inside the helmet. Honestly, you these days can't be bothered to listen to other people when they talk. It's non-stop chatter. It can't be. Miss Oldbeg? What is it, you young whippersnappers? Do I know you? Wait, you! Your powers, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, about what happened back then? You didn't even get nominated this year, did you? Oh, and that's right. You're doing that children's exercise program trying to play nice. <clears throat> That's me. Thankfully, I still have a job. I love that show. You're a hoot. Uh, okay. Okay, lady. Um, what are you doing here? Look at my uniform and tell me you can't tell I'm a member of security. What? That outfit? Annoying noisy brats get the blaster. <laughs> Miss Oldbag, what are you doing here? What happened to your position at Global Studios? Oh, that old place. Well, since that incident, they've been letting people go. When they cut the security team, I got the clean slip. What incident? What did you do? I didn't do anything, you youngin. Don't you remember? That incident a year ago. When this lady got up, uh, got on the witness stand and testified. Y yeah. And you, weren't you the one who was bullying me? This fragile girl at heart? Um, I plead the fifth. But, you know, I think maybe I rubbed up uh, rep the upper management the wrong way by testifying. Yes, that has to be it. Everything is all your fault. M me? I thought about being a bodyguard at first. 
And after being handed old Pinky, you, a bodyguard? For your friend, that very good looking guy with the red jacket and the ruffles. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth? But. That sort of arrangement would be entirely too troublesome for me. That's what he said to me. What did I ever do to deserve that? Right. Um, so, did something happen? I don't have all the details, but it looks like another one of those incidents happened again. Uh, and incident? Like a murder? Uh, kind of incident? Maybe. You see, I'm a bit of a devilish woman. But wherever I go, showers of blood are sure to follow. I bet you didn't know that. Um, then shouldn't you quit being a security guard? At least for other people's sake. Silence, whippersnapper. <coughs> oh, God. Hey, Nick? What? What is it? I don't like that devilish smile playing on your lips. Let's make like we're going to the bathroom and check things out. No, no way. The police told us not to go anywhere. Remember? Huh? How boring. You're such a boring guy. You've got no motivation, no spirit. Huh? What? Uh, what's going on? Are you giving Miss my trouble again, Nick? Not you two, Pearls. Please don't stick your little nose into this one. So listen to this, Pearly. This one time at lawyer camp, Nick? Uh, okay, I get it. Let's go take a look. Hey, I knew you couldn't say no to me, Nick. That's right. You'd walk over miles of hot coals for me, Sigmaya, wouldn't you, Nick? That would be every time we work a case together. Well, what are we waiting for? Uh, let's go already. You can come too. Uh, come along too, Pearly. Goody, I can come. Uh, I get to come. I get to come. <sighs> well, bye, old egg. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. There's really nothing out of the ordinary here. Are you looking for the incident about uh, that old lady was talking about? It doesn't look like it happened here. Well, we'd better go look somewhere else. All right, let's uh, then let's try. Excuse me. Are you by chance, Miss Maya Faye? Um, yeah, that's me. You have a phone call waiting for you at the front desk. I wonder if it's someone from Korean Village. <clears throat> I thought it was the uh, original bellboy, not some new bellboy. What's wrong with Sigmaia? Oh, nothing. You guys go on ahead. I'll be right there, okay? Okay. Right this way, Miss Faye. Let's go look somewhere else now, Mr. Nick. Yeah, okay. This is a little exciting and a little scary. Away. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel. I told you. Uh, I told you, people get the info they want, which means that I've got a right to know. Nope, don't care who you... Nope, don't care who you are, pal. We're still investigating, so you can't go in. Oh, is it Lotta? What's your problem? Just, uh, just you wait. It'll be all over the morning paper. Scruffy detective secret scandal revealed. You'll see. I'll get you back. Those two sound pretty serious. That southern accent can only mean... Hey, right. 
Hey, Lada. Come on, do a gal favor and tell this cop I'm just doing my job and I've got right. Ah, you. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal, help a guy out. Tell her that only the police are allowed here. This is the scenes of murder, so she should leave this place to us pros. Uh, a murder? Ah, shoot me, I'm in big mouth. See? I knew it. My gut instinct told me so. I've always trust- I always trust my gut. A murder, it said. And that's what it is. A genuine murder. <laughs> hey, wait. Yeehaw, murder. Of a big star, no less. Oh, man, I'm in trouble now. Hey, Gumshoe. You okay? You good, buddy? So, Detective Gumshoe, a murder? Ah, no, that's not it. I got my facts mixed up for a second there, pal. Um, Nick? <coughs> Is the dead person the Nickel Samurai? Huh? Why do you ask? Well, Mystic Maya was rooting for him, so... It wasn't the Nickel Samurai that got bumped. Actually, Nickel Samurai is under suspicion of doing the bumping off. What? That guy, that guy who died was this hero named the Jammin' Ninja, pal. The Jammin' Ninja. Um, that woman with the big puffy hair looks, that looks like cotton candy? You mean, Lada? That woman, she was there at that time too, right? That time? When Mystic Maya did that channeling? Oh, that time. Well... Lada's a journalist, so that's why she was there. Journalist. Looks like she was hanging around here before the murder happened. Hanging around? Yeah. Hiding in the in wait in front of the Jam and Ninja's door, pal. But why would she? She wouldn't tell me, pal. Just get uh said something about getting my big <laughs> About getting my big scoop. Scoop? What sort of news could she be after? Oh, she joined the paparazzi, didn't she? <laughs> I am willing to bet that's what happened. So the victim was the jamming ninja. Mr. Jamming Ninja? He was really popular on the rival TV show to the Nickel Samurai. Oh. Dang, that's a look. Uh, the victim was the action star Juan Corita. He got a huge push and rode to uh, the express train to start him. I mean, even I know who he is. <coughs> yeah, even I recognize his face. <sighs> But I heard lately that Matt on guard's been taking the wind out of his sail. I'm telling you, pal, as far as who's popular, those two are hawking all the limelight. I guess there's no space for Mr. Powers at all, huh? Poor guy. Mr. on guard, um, the Nickel Samurai, right? Yep, I mean, no. Yeah. You've got to say it with more ch oomph. The Nickel Samurai. Anyway. Now that Juan Corita is gone, that means on guard has him has the whole stage to himself, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't bet on it, pal. We can't have that happen, you know. Can't have that happen? What's that supposed to mean? I wonder.
I can understand the flowers in front of the dressing rooms, but what are stuffed bears doing here? Could be that there's an action star with a soft spot for teddy bears? Nah, can't be. Now, <sighs> Nickel Samurai, he really took the Grand Prix today. Maya's a big fan of us. Really? Oh, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Matt on guard was just arrested, pal. On suspicion of murdering Juan Corita. What? I'm not a real fan of action shows or anything, but I know who Juan Corita and Matt on guard are. Can't talk about one without talking the about the other, I guess. They even debuted around the same time. So they have this real fiery rivalry uh, with each other. I like you and me, pal. I never knew he thought of me as a rival. Sorry, I'm not reading the dead end things because um, my voice is starting to go real fast, so. Is my eyes and mine are real pros now. Pros? Pros are doing what? At doing police work, of course. My eyes are like a hawk. And my professional eyes spot a messy incident. A messy, bloody incident. That's why I don't have time for me you meddling kids and your petty little things. Stage for the post ceremony stage show. There was supposed to be a press meeting after the show, but now. It looks like no one will hear what the Nickel Samurai had to confess after. <clears throat> Seats for the spectators of the post ceremony show and, their, and the press conference. But it's too bad neither event is going to be held now. These cameras must belong to the press that came over, uh, came to cover the conference. They're all basically doing the same thing. They're in them at the empty stage. A lobby with a grand staircase always feels enormous, but right now, the only thing filling this enormous room is anxiety about the murder. I really hope nothing else bad happens here. Ominous. He's fit for a king. Yeah. It was the first time I ate that food. What was it called again? I think it started with a key? Kiwi? That's right. A kiwi. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's a sweet bit sour fruit all in one. Poor Pearls, having eaten only vegetables all her life. She's been missing out. Sure is one luxurious hotel. Almost to the point of gaudy, with how it blends together everything fancy imaginable. Speaking of fancy, I don't, didn't that bell boy give me something like that last year? The award ceremony was, ju uh, was just held on that stage. It was really fabulous. You just reminded me of the circus for a second. I wonder if everyone is all right. I heard that very big circus just recently started holding performances again. I'm sure they're all fine, Pearls. 
There's a grand set of doors over there. Oh. It's the doors my followed the bellboy at. You haven't cleaned up all the food yet. There's a sad feeling hanging over, uh, hanging in the air now that the party is over. Ooh. So that's called the chandelier, right? Yep. Yeah, what's that for? What does it do? Well, it's for lighting up a room, Pearls. Um, Mr. Nick, I look down though. My neck hurts. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Why was Mr. Ungard arrested? Sorry, pal, but that's not something I can tell you. We just started the investigation, so we don't want any leaks. Looks like yet another Steel Samurai hero is in hot water. Um, Mr. Nick, if Miss Maya knew about this... Yeah, I know. She'd make me take this case. I know. Hey, so what's going on, Mr. Wright? It looks like Juan Corita has been killed. Wh what? Juan is... he's... <clears throat> looks like he was murdered and a sus suspect was arrested. That suspect is Mr. Matt on guard. You, you're joking, right? Nope. They arrested the Nickel Samurai on suspicion of murdering the Jammin' Ninja. Ugh. Again. I feel sick. Again? Uh, about a year ago, something like just like this happened, girls. I still can't believe. No way. No way, Matt would. Mr. Power's gun in his hand. Oh, before I forget, this... This is for you, Mr. Wright. I got this from the bellboy that came by earlier. Radio transceiver received from Mr. Powers. Er, me? Why? I don't know. All he said was that, uh, was, it was for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney. is the most energetic and active actor out there right now. The Nickel Samurai really sealed his place as a pop idol, but he kept adding fuel to the fire with his rivalry with, with Juan anyway. Mr. Juan, he's a Jimmy Ninja, right? Those two would butt heads over everything they could think of. But I'd say that Matt was the one who almost always came out on top. <coughs> I guess some people only know how to relate to others by butting heads like a rat. Vaughn said that he'd take Matt on this time too, so he joined the right TV show. And that was the Jim Ninja. The stylish Nickel Samurai and the Burning Jim Ninja. Oh, man. hurts. <laughs> well, things turned real, uh, turned messy real fast with those two using their shows for their war. And the final tally, not around, it's pretty obvious how things ended up. Matt even won the Grand Prix this year. The final win over his rival, I guess. Mr. On Guard was going to hold a press conference, wasn't he? That's what I heard. Though, if you wanted to get technical about it, it was the Nickel Samurai's conference. 
Nickel Samurais? Yeah, he was supposed to wear his costume again. Press conference that way. He was gonna be in costume? But why? I'm not sure. They don't keep me in the loop anymore. I was just wondering, where's Miss Sigmaya? She's been gone a long time. Now that she mentions it, Maya was only going to answer a phone call. Maybe she got lost. I'll take a quick look around for her. Beep, beep, beep. Ah. <clears throat> what, what is it, Mr. Nick? Um, huh? I'm, I'm not sure. It's coming from this transceiver. Yes? Hello? Right here. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney? And you are? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with, such as... Help! Nick! Miss Maya. Maya? So... Mr. Wright, wouldn't you agree that uh, the more important issue is the fate of the girl? Her fate? Does he mean what I think he means? Maya, where are you? Are you hurt? <clears throat> Come now, don't fall apart on me yet. This... No, this can't be. Now that I have your attention, Mr. Attorney... I have a modest proposal for you. If you do what I require, then I will return your valuable item, unharmed. What is this called again in your fancy lawyer term? Kidnapping for ransom. Yes, that's it. This is a kidnapping. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! The oh, girls? No. My sight. Everything's fading away. Maya. Maya. Maya's been kidnapped. There. Are you there? Mr. Attorney. Are you there? How much? How much do you want? Very good, Mr. Attorney. And I'm glad you have such a good grasp of the situation. Hurry up and state your condition, and then return Maya. Money is not what I seek. What? What I want is a certain verdict. I would like a complete acquittal. Complete acquittal? Well, what in the world have you uh, done to need? I'm not the person you will be representing. You are currently at the Gatewater Hotel, are you not? And I know that a murder has just taken place there. Juan Carita was killed, and the suspect is not on guard. You are, as expected, right on top of things, Mr. Attorney. Now then, what I want is very simple. I want you to obtain a complete acquittal from Act on Guard. No. Not on guard, but why? He did not kill anyone. I can attest to that. However. However? However what? However, someone is framing him for the murder. A very smart someone who is setting him up to take the fall. If I agree and do what he wants, I... Can I believe he'll keep his end of the bargain? You are, of course, at liberty to... Take me at my word or not. However, there's one thing you can take as fact. Right now, your very precious item is with me. In my possession. Mm, help, Nick! Mm, Nick! <clears throat> Maya. You have two days. Of course, tonight he will be in questioning with the police. But... The police, uh, but the trial is in two days. At that trial, you'll win a not guilty verdict. Remember, you only have one chance. One chance, Mr. Attorney. What, 
one? You expect me to get a not guilty in one trial day? Yes, exactly. I don't believe I was wrong in choosing you. So, don't let me down. <clears throat> uh. Oh, yes, that's right. Now that I am playing the role of the kidnapper, I can't pass up this chance to say. And don't even think about calling the cops. Hmm, not great. But you get the idea. <sighs> D damn it, who... Who the hell are you? <laughs> Very well, I'll tell you that much. My name is... The Killer. Beep. <laughs> Beep. Mr. Nick, where's Miss Sigmaya? She's been kidnapped. N no, it's all my fault. If only I'd gone with Miss Sigmaya. It's not your fault, girls. But it is, it is. Miss Sigmaya, what? Mm hmm. Crying. Mr. Wright, I think we should. Uh, tell the police what's going on. No, we can't do that. If we do, who knows what will happen to Maya. Mr. Nick, what, do, uh, what about the detective we saw earlier? Detective Gumshoe. Yes, that's it. Wait here. I'll be right back. Alright, I'll take care of Pearl while you're away. <clears throat> what? Ransom? Shh, not so loud. The ransom is complete acqui- uh... The ransom is complete acquittal for Matt Ungar. Wait, so the deal is complete acquittal in exchange for Maya. You mean... And this means Matt and Guard is obviously the killer, pal. No doubt about it. But the guy said that Matt and Guard is innocent. <laughs> you really believe what a kidnapper tells you, pal? I guess he has a point. If Ungard really is innocent, then why the kidnapping? And on top of everything else, there's all this evidence we keep finding. Well, huh? the forensics team is having a field day back there. Um. But it's strange. There's so much evidence that it feels like something's wrong. On guard's a bit extra. Bit of a Tom Sawyer fan. <laughs> uh, there's too much evidence? Is that possible? Actually, didn't the kidnapper say something about on guard being set up? Anyway, it looks like you won't be leaving here tonight, pal. Just sit tight and cooperate with the investigation. Or right, you can start yours. Uh, Alright. Isn't there another way? You've also got to be careful about pushing the kidnapper the wrong way. You're right. Date. Unknown. Time. Unknown. Location? Unknown. Uh, oh, my head. Oh, where? Where am I? I wonder if I'm still in that hotel. <laughs> what happened to me? Nick, Pearly. Come on, you guys, this isn't funny anymore. Cut, click. Hello, sir. I see you have awoken. Ah! Me? I'm known as the killer. The, the killer? You mean like an assassin? I, I'm too young to die. Don't worry. You're not my target. For now, anyway. Ah, Nick, Nick, where are you? Help me. Yes, that's right. Only one person can save you now. And that is Mr. Phoenix Wright. Huh? What? Nick, Nick's going to save me? Calm down and be a good girl. Think of this as a business transaction.
a, a business transaction? I am going to contact him now. I hope you'll co cooperate and play your assigned role, role well. Nick! What's going to happen to me? Nick! Curly! What's this? This is Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney. You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with, such as... <clears throat> March 21st, 8.11 a.m. Wright and Co. Law Office. Good morning! Ah, morning, pearls. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, come on, let's hurry and go see Mr. Ungard. We have to wait a bit, pearls. Visiting hours don't start until 9 a.m., so... Oh, I see. Uh, Mystic Maya, if only, if only I had gone with you. Oh, pearls, she's been like this since last night. We managed to get home somehow yesterday evening. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe gently holding her by the hand, leading her here. But by the looks of it, I don't think Pearl's got any sleep at all last night. Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya, she's all right, right? Yeah, she's all right. Either way, I'm going to save her. You can trust me. Please, please help her. I'm only, to stay, only able to stay this calm and collected because Pearl's is doing the crying for both of us. We couldn't wait for visiting hours to start, so Pearls and I came down here early to visit one nickel samurai charged with the murder of the Jamma Ninja. Good, good morning. How are you today? I know this situation might be a little tough for you. Um, we're... Oh, sorry, dude. I already signed up. It, excuse me? I already have life insurance. I signed up a long time ago. Because my job is, you know. Oh, no, no, no. We're not insurance salespeople. Really? Dude, I don't need that right now either. I extinguishers on me. This building is in my house, so... No, no, no. We're not here to sell you fire extinguishers either. I'm a lawyer. My name's Phoenix Wright. Uh... Lawyer? Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask my manager, okay? <laughs> Uncle Samurai is sure a strange person, isn't he? I think strange is an understatement. Sorry about that. You're just in time. Huh? You're a lawyer, dude, right? My manager's looking for a good one right now, so how about it? Mr. Nick, this is our chance. I have to make him let me take this case. I have to. Sorry to intrude, but I'd like to ask you a few personal questions. Um, oh, that's okay, but dude, my autobiography is coming out soon, so... If I say stuff without the publisher's approval, then I'm going to be in real hot water. Hold on a sec. I'm going to ask my publisher, okay? Mr. Ungar is so lucky. He has so many people he can talk to. Um, I don't know if he actually has anyone he can really talk to. Sorry about that. Like I thought. Publisher said it'd be real bad if I said anything, dude. <coughs> Does he have a mind of his own? Mr. Ungard, I'd like to ask you about the- Oh, are you covering this for a tabloid as a side job, dude? Um, well, if you want- If you want a, uh, my statement on this, you should ask for my staff. No, no, no. I'm not asking on behalf of the tabloid. 
Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask the president of the studio, okay? Is he all right, Mr. Nick? If we're talking about on guard's brain here, I wouldn't put my money on it. Sorry about that. Uh, the studio president said, even Neo Mount Fuji itself knows I'm not the murderer. Um, Mr. Nick, what's Neo Mount Fuji? It's a mountain in the city of Neo Old Tokyo, the city of the Nickel Samurai Prince. <laughs> Mr. Unkard, this is an attorney's badge. Dude, I'm sorry, but I don't have the free time to be looking at things like that. Huh? I'm much too busy with Nickel Samurai stuff. I don't have the time to take a lawyer's correspondence course. <coughs> Why does he believe I'm a salesman? Insurance, then extinguishers, now this. What's that? It's a ticket for the press conference. You were going to give one after the Grand Prix, right? <laughs> huh? Me? Yes, while you were in costume. Um, I never heard anything like that, dude. I only heard about the stage show. I always leave that kind of stuff to my manager. He didn't know? That's all. Mr. Nick, what are you going to do with that? I don't know yet, but I figured I could at least show it to him. Is that a transceiver? Hey, looks real nice one. I like a real nice one, too. <coughs> I got it as a present from someone. Hmm? Interesting. I've also been instructed to take your case. <laughs> Is that what you heard from the transceiver? Yes. Dude, that's terrible. Don't let some disembodied voice boss you around. This coming from a man with a cell phone on his wrist. Well, dude, I think it's about time for me to get going. Please wait. I really need to take your case. There's always other people in need of a lawyer, right? Want me to introduce you to a few? But please, please let N Mr. Nick represent you. <clears throat> oh, man, oh man. Lawyers these days. Now you dudes use kids to pull in clients too? If you don't let me take you as, uh, your lawyer, then the killer is going to... Wait, what did you just say? The killer? The... The killer? What's he doing? He looks like he's mulling something over. You remember this MF? <laughs> Alright, dude, I accept your terms. Should I be talking like Keanu Reeves in The Matrix or uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure for this guy? <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you represent me in court. We did it. We did it, Mister Nick. Okay, no los dos. I'm just really bad at doing that voice. Um, I can't do Super Dude too well. <clears throat> Go ahead and ask me anything. I'll help out as much as I can. <clears throat> Man, I think, I think my lucky star is that people know my name. Well, you're quite the hero, and you're in the national spotlight. I didn't, I didn't know who he is. Does that mean I'm not a good citizen? <coughs> It's really great to be the Nickel Samurai. Dude, lately, I just keep getting off more and more popular. True enough. The Nickel Samurai is very popular among high schoolers and secretaries right now. I guess Mr. Engard has a way of catching the eyes of women. Do you know my motto? Freshing like a spring breeze. That's what I am. A spring breeze? 
That's why this kind of scandal is disastrous, dude. I mean, even if I get out of here tomorrow, it's still gonna look bad. But everyone loves a good scandal. What happened? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage to do. So I was in my nickel samurai costume. And you were alone the entire time? My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show? I told you, dude. I have no idea about any press conference, alright? It's strange. I thought the Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. Anyway, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kind of noisy. Mr. Corita was already dead at that time? Yeah, that's what I gathered anyway from my manager. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do a thing on his own. That's when the detective in green coat showed up. He searched me. Then, out of the blue, the dude arrested me. But you and the victim, Mr. Huang Corita? What sort of... That's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Man, with that face of his, you can't even tell he's the same age as me. And he wanted to try and make a jamming ninja movie, even though we all knew it had failed. Nickel Samurai still won the, in the end, right? Yeah, took, I took the Grand Prix by storm. So, I... Uh, so why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyway? Dude, you think it'd be the other way around, you know? Um, do you know why you were arrested? I guess maybe my full body search went badly? Did they find something on you? They found a button from Jammin' Ninja's costume. A button? I don't get it either. It was caught in the pleats of my samurai pants, or Kaku. Dude, I really think someone planted it there, though. I'm serious. I wonder if that's what really happened. I guess this is about all I'm going to get out of him. Mr. Nick? Yeah? Let's ask one last thing. Let's test Mr. On Guard to see if he is really... Uh, let's test Mr. On Guard to see if he's really innocent or not. Well, we can do that? Yes. If you use this... I is Mugatama. You won't be able to hide any secrets from you, Mr. Nick. <coughs> I'm sure of it. I get it. Mr. Ungard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Please answer me, Alyssa. What is it, dude? Did you kill Mr. Juan Corita? Please put the phone away and answer this question yourself. All right, just so we're clear, dude. I did kill anyone. And that includes Juan Corita. Okay. Well, Mr. Nick. Nothing. Not a chain or a lock in sight. Which means it's all right to trust him. Yeah, it does appear that way. Well, at least I can breathe a sigh of relief knowing my client is innocent. Um, the trial's tomorrow, right? I'm counting on you, dude. Oh. Well, at least we were able to get Ma Matt Ungard as our client. <clears throat> and we know that he didn't do it, which is very important. So, so now what should we do? Well, the trial is tomorrow and we only get this one chance. 
There's only one way to prove Matt Ongar's innocence. <clears throat> we have to find the real killer. Okay, then let's start looking. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in here without... Good morning. Hold on, it's you. What's going on around here? Uh, um... I heard poor Juan was killed, is that true? It's a bad rerun is what it is. Uh, there's still samurai doing the most evil of deeds. Um, you know, that's not entirely... Oh, have you know I was a huge fan of wands. Oh, and why do all the stars I'm interested in drop one by one like flies? It's always been that way ever since I was... Okay. Um, actually I wanted to ask you about the murder and what happened. Mm. Don't push me, boy. Um, Mr. Nick? I couldn't hear everything she said because she was talking too fast. Miss Oldbag, could you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you sp spiky haired smarty pants. <laughs> My dear Hammer died a year ago in that dreadful murder. And only recently did I finally find a star that makes his heart go badum again. I don't know what to say. I ask of you, why does every star I cheer for always, uh... Why does every star I cheer for always end up kicking the bucket? Mm, I'd watch your words. No one's going to get away with saying anything bad about my wand. <coughs> but I haven't said anything. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyway. Huh? What woman? That irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. I mean, what is that manner of speaking supposed to be, and why does she never stop? Honestly, women these days, they don't know the meaning of the word modesty. Girls, are you thirsty? Um, a little? Okay, I'll go get you some juice or something. Thank you very much. Hey, are you paying attention? Youngins today. So I'm guessing this old bag heard everything from Lana. I want to ask you about what happened around the time of the murder. I don't know about uh, anything about that. I was uh, here getting ready. Getting ready? What? Show, of course. And, well, the press conference afterwards. Cue mysterious music for the magical press conference. Anyway, I don't know anything about the murder. Ah, I see. But, hmm? but if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. What? I saw the most important moment of the night. The most important moment? You don't mean... Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. When you speak to your elders, you should always be polite. Really, kids sees the kids today. Please, tell me, what did you see? Oh, good God. The murder t uh, last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then again, what murder isn't? Please don't stray on to another tangent, please. If you want to hear more, then show your respect and bring this lady a present. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel. Looks like the investigation is still in full swing. Hotel staff and the police are running around like a bunch of headless chickens. I wonder if we can do any investigating of our own in this kind of atmosphere. Well, 
got to roll up the sleeves and try, I guess. Uh, uh. March 21st, get hill all the way. Hey, you're here. Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lada. Hey, Mr. Cop fella. This, uh, the thief showed his face. What? Arrest him. Put him on trial. Find him guilty. Give him the death penalty. Well, what's wrong, Lada? Are you feeling okay? Looked here and there and up and down the mountain, but it ain't here. So why don't you hurry up and give it back to me, you creep? Uh, um, what are you looking for? My camera. Camera. It's my life look. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Y your camera? Look, don't lots of people say the criminal always goes back to the scene of the crime? And looky looky, here you are. Yep, here I am, faced with a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So you lost your camera? It ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in the store and it's 1600 brand new. Huh? But didn't you just say you bought it for 700 I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store. About five hours, I reckon. I made this itty bit of scratch on it and the manager got all huffed in the huffed up, huffed up in the face. <clears throat> he gave me this talking to and was real mean about it too. He done made me cry at that. When did you lose your camera? Last night, after the murder happened. Must have been when I was running, uh, busy running around looking at the thing. That's when I lost sight of my dear darling's expensive sweetie. Lotta, what did you capture with that expensive camera, of course? I don't rightly know. I'm gonna snap a shot of anything that caught my eye. So I don't remember. Inside, I couldn't get anything from my big scoop. I wonder if Lada's missing camera is even connected to the murder. Uh, Lada, please tell me what you know about what happened at the time of the murder. Well, from before the ceremony last night, I was hanging around here in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here until around the time that uh, Mr. Ungard was arrested. What were you doing here? You sure you went to school, city boy? Wherever a lot of hard goes, there's a story to be found. And a big scoop to be had. A big scoop? I told you before, I'm gonna be the best tabloid photographer this world's ever seen. Wrecking course, that means I'm always looking for the perfect shot. I wonder what the scoop. I wonder what scoop she was after this time. All oh, that. I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So maybe I wasn't here the entire time. Lada, are you sure you weren't here the entire time? So you could take a picture for your big scoop. Well, maybe I was, but that's just what real journalists do. I got some juicy inside info, uh, so I thought to myself, why not get a picture for Brew? What kind of story was it that you were hanging around here? Oop, sorry, Mr. Lawyer. Can't be telling you that. Trade secret, you know. Not again. Why does everyone have something to hide? You've been stopped, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, take that, Mr. Lawyer. I'm glad someone around here is happy. Miss Lana, and your I rule smile. Um, where are we? We're in Mr. Matt Ungard's dressing room. This is our client's room. 
May I help you with something? Um, uh, we're... You're Mr. Omgard's lawyer, correct? I gathered as much. I also looked for lawyers on my end, but to no avail. Um, how did you know I'm his lawyer? You were just saying that he was he is your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. Wow. It's simple deduction, really. The trial is tomorrow, and Mr. Ungod's situation is looking rather glim. Grim. So you came here to uh uh came here one stop in your mad dash to find clues and build his case, correct? <laughs> Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off either. Really not the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. I'm Adrian Andrews. I hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. All right. She may be a small stature, but appearances can be deceiving. I assume the first thing you need to know is uh, what everyone was doing that night, correct? Right? Yes, that is correct. And I will tell you. Before the award ceremony, I had dinner with Mr. Ungard. In this very room, I might add. Dinner? What did you eat? I told you, I hate to waste time with trifling details. If you took a look at the table yourself, you wouldn't need to ask me. I bet she's a lot of fun at parties. When the award show was starting, I headed for Viola Hall. After the show ended, you came back to this room? No, I had some small errands to run. I helped with the preparations in the lobby. Oh, preparations for the post-ceremony show, I guess? When it comes to time for post-ceremony show, I came back to call for Mr. Ongar. After that, I went to visit Mr. Corrida. And that's when you found his body, isn't it? You really held strong through everything. Yeah, she does seem to be mentally tough as nails. Um, so, about you and... Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask how Mr. Ungard and I are related, are you? S sorry. I have no idea how he could choose you as his lawyer. Andrews? <laughs> Why did she have to go and say something like that? Mr. Nick, calm down and hang in there. I'll give you a shoulder to, uh, I'll give you a shoulder rub to relieve your stress later, okay? I already gave you my name earlier, but I'll add that I'm Mr. Ungar's manager. His manager? Speaking of managers, did the victim Mr. Corita have one? No, he did not. He didn't? Google Studios has a very different policy from Worldwide Studios in that... Worldwide Studios does not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself. Uh... And unforgiving yourself to your poor partner. Dragging a little girl like her to places like this. Honestly. You're wrong. I, I'm doing this to help Miss Maya. Girls, calm down and hang in there. I'll buy you a juice later, alright? Mm. Looks like dishes left over from a dinner. A dinner for two at that. I'm sure they're Mr. and Garden Miss Andrews' plates. Looks like they had T-bone steaks. What's with Global Studios and T-bone steaks? Pearl got a snap a bitch. <laughs> There's a giant bone sitting on the plate. I don't really like meat. Huh? There's something weird about this plate. I wish I could put my finger on what it is. There's a knife missing. There's some samurai looking clothes on the sofa here. Um, I think that jacket's called a happy. Whatever it is, I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. Maya would be absolutely thrilled.
probably miss her in guard's suitcase. For someone who can, who is only going to be here for the award show, this is a lot of stuff. Looks like he has about three days worth of clothes. Stars really are different from us, aren't they? That's the bedroom over there. That's a bed? Wow, they have really big beds here. You were the one taking care of the arrangements for this press conference, right? Yes, that's right. But Mr. Angard said he didn't know about it. Is that what he said? Huh? Actually, I didn't know all the details either. It was a request from the publicity department. All I did was help out and do what I was asked. I see. I wonder about that. I wouldn't take her to be the type of person to do something without knowing the details. Um, okay, I hate traffic matters. Okay. I asked to become Mr. Uncard's manager. It's a pleasure to manage with his nice disposition. <laughs> hmm, Mr. Ungard does seem like a rather weak-willed man, always doing as he's told. He's always saying my manager, right, Mr. Dick? <laughs> Did you know the victim, Mr. Corita? Yes, I knew him. The world is such a small place after Did you know about his rivalry with Nickel Samurai? Honestly, they were like children when it came to that. Time and time again, those two competed with each other over the most trivial things. If either one of them wasn't so stubborn, then maybe no one would have needed to die. I've got a hunch this woman knows more than she's letting on. She must know why Juan... Corridor was killed. I hate talking about myself. It's a trifling matter, that's why. So, sorry. <laughs> Take away that layer of sarcasm, and she really does seem to hate herself. Do you have any ideas? As to? As to why Mr. Cord Corita was murdered. Why would you ask me such a thing? I'm just doing my job. So, do you have any ideas? Oh boy. M Miss Andrews? Sorry, but there's nothing I have to add to this conversation. Is it a sign clock, Mr. Nick? Yes. There's getting to be more and more of these lately. <laughs> Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Juan Carita's room, Pearls. Mr. Carita? victim. Which makes this the crime scene, too. Wow, oh, it's you. So, what happened? The kidnapper. He... Has he contacted you again? Not yet. He probably won't until we win Mr. Ungard's trial. <laughs> um, you doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? I just want Maya to be alright. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal. Uh, can you do that, even if we want to look around at the crime scene? Just this once. Special circumstances, right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know, but you gotta keep quiet. 
my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go. Little Miss. Uh, here you go, my little Missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. Haha. <laughs> Wouldn't want you to get lost in a hotel too big for its own good. Mr. Nick, I got a map. That's great, girl. Um, uh, Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Hotel map, uh, guide map added to the court. Actually, I want a suit. Pants on that. Harsh. A lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector's edition, stuffed teddies, classic models. It's pretty overwhelming. Is there a kind of bear he doesn't have? There's even a few in the trash can. Yeah, I get the feeling maybe the guy didn't really like bears. Or teddies. It's hard to bear with all these problems. Growl. I don't think I want to bear with the trauma the last case caused me. I think I see the president of a certain big country that bans you from referring to Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> What's wrong, Mr. Nick? It's a suitcase. There are so many things that I bet it very close. There's his clothes, a dryer, an electric shaver, a calculator. Do you want stars pack too much stuff like Mr. Greta? Possibly. Slide to the right. Slide to the left. Hmm? It's so messy in here. Girls really like things neat and tidy, I take it. There's a lot of electric things in here I've never seen before. Hey, Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. Okay, that over there is a watch. You wear it on your wrist. You know what a watch is. Oops, for a second I forgot I was talking with pearls and not Maya. There are all sorts of things in this refrigerator. The carrot juice bottle and the tomato juice bottle are both empty. It's too much of a hassle to throw them away, I guess. They're all j vegetable juices. I guess he must have been a real health man. Oh, there's a beet, some ketchup, and a bottle of strawberry jam, too. Maybe red was his favorite color? I just remembered something else about this case. This is a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but... Still usable. That's strange. The guitar is not here. Maybe he forgot to bring it up to the show? But Miss Sigmaya, she said the bright red guitar was Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? Guitar case is wet, but it's only wet on the top of it. Yeah, there's no water, in water inside the case. This, uh, this is water, isn't it? Guitar case added to the court record. Looks like Mr. Greta had dinner last night. This bottle is tomato juice. We had a lot of food at the awards show last night, but I wonder if the stars had gone on stage after only eating a mere meal like this. Cell phone. It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's tomato juice in it. You tomato juice. I don't really like it much. There's a bottle of it on the table over there. That's probably where this came from. Uh, but doesn't it seem weird? I mean, everything else is scattered on the floor. She's right. The flower vase is broken. The makeup was is strewn everywhere. 
Why is this glass the only thing that's still all right? One glass added to the court record. So that's a bed, right? Yep, it's big, but it's a bed. Ah, Mr. Nick, it's so soft. Big beds must be a rarity for her. Cause of death. Do you know what was the cause of death? Well, technically, the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but one look at the victim should tell you about. It should? <laughs> yeah, here's a picture. Oh. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal, that's the murder weapon. So he was stabbed to death? They are looking at the fingerprints down the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yeah. And it looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. On Guard's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Burn photo added to the program. Why was Mr. On Guard arrested? Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? Yeah, it looks like the victim, Juan Correta, really put up a big fight. <laughs> yeah, one look at the crime scene and you can tell. There's signs of a struggle everywhere. Well, yeah, during the fight, his button came off. Mr. On Guard said something about the button. Something like one of the jamming ninja buttons got caught in his pocket. But, but, that's not all. What? There was a witness, pal. A witness? Who, who is it? That lady. Old Mi uh, Miss Oldman. Please, anyone but her. <sighs> the prosecution has plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention there's something around here, uh, around where the Vic... Not to mention there's something around where the Vic was that's a little off. Something that's a little off, as in... As in, that's for you to figure out, pal. Alright, let's try to figure it out, Mr. Nick. Bottles of cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. This is probably where Mr. Creative bought his assailant. Where did these bits of glass from? The flower vase, maybe? There are flowers on the floor. But I don't know why, uh, what they are. You don't know much about flowers, do you, Nick? Damn it, Pearls, I'm a lawyer, not a botanist. Lana, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? From a scoop? <laughs> what I want to know about are the details of the scoop. But that's not something I can tell you. I mean, there's my bread and... Uh, that there's my bread and butter. Alright then, an unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm going to say that you were looking into a scandal. Yeah. Could it be that you, Lotta Hart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Ankur and Karita and this person? Who the heck is that? Um, you think us journalists are all a bunch of idiots? You can't fool me. I'm a pro. Uh, oh, really? What is this person anyway? Well, if you're such a pro, why don't you do your own research and figure it out? Now, let's try that again, shall we? Could it be that you, out of heart, are looking for a break with a huge story? Oh. This woman? She's Adrian Andrews. 
Matt on guards. Finish. <laughs> The Nickel Samurai's manager secretly caught meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. It would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this thing, uh, at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. You gotta have a backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah. You gotta have that, that, what's it? New socks. Um, you mean... News source? That's it. So show me something that shows that one guy had something with Miss Andrew. Why was Juan Corrida murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Matt and Guard's life in danger by your actions? <laughs> Why do you ask questions for which I have no answers? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corrida. You're not that close? That's right. I've never been good at being intimate with another person. Not good at being intimate with another person. Somehow, I highly doubt that. Can you tell me about this guitar case? Oh, hey. Uh, this is just what I heard, pal, but that's the Jammin' Ninja signature item. The guitar case? No, not that. What do you take me as? I mean, the guitar inside, of course. But the guitar's missing. Yeah, we looked for it too. It's not normal for a person to forget to bring their most famous item to an award show. It's starting to sound like the right guitar is related to this case after all. So about this wine glass. Ah, so you noticed it, pal. The whole crime scene was a mess, but this glass was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, Detective Gumshoe? No, actually, Miss Von Karma noticed it first. Yep, girls noticed it before me too. Hey, wait a minute. So does that mean Miss Von Karma's here at the hotel? Yep, she is around. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see here, I'll be running the thousand meter dash. Hide, run, get out! Well, what's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Hmm, I've heard the sound somewhere before. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? For some reason, whenever I pop, uh, hear that sound, she pops out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened last time. But, sorry, I've got to make myself scarce. Later, pal. Yeah. At last, you reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix, right? Hmm? Would it be too much for you, uh, too much to ask for you to be nice to me for a change? So, you're the type to steal information from pitifully hopeless detectives. It's 
very dishonorable of you. Ow. Hey, don't you dare run away, uh, Scruffy McTrenchcoat. Nah. I didn't think the detectives of this country could be this pitiful. Detective, come over here for a second. Yeah. Oh, he's dead. Ah, yes, please. I'd like to report a murder. Yeah, it happened right in front of me. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, uh, I need to go. She's looking at me. Give me the crazy eye. Bye. <laughs> I feel better knowing at least you were man enough to face your punishment. He was so scared, he just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you, you have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forget that. This time, victory is mine. Victory is yours? Is that, uh, is that all this means to you? What? what? Hm. Come, Scruffy, the investigation briefing is about to begin. Yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Dad, what did she throw at me now? What is this? Well, I guess this means I gotta get back to the precinct now, pal. If you ever need me, come down to the Criminal Affairs Department, alright? And if you can, try not to let Miss Von Karma see you. <clears throat> Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Autograph? The paper's got uh, Mr. Corita's name on it. Uh, written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Ah, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Here. Uh, look here. See how it says to my dearest Wendy in more normal, normal letters here? This is sloppy, unreadable writing. It's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on. Wendy. I've heard that name somewhere. Wendy. 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 I'm I'm just kidding, I know who Wendy is. <laughs> uh Oh, Mr. Wright, how are you? Ah, Mr. Powers. Have you been here the entire time? Yeah. People connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home. Let alone leave. Uh, but... Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. Uh, Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to the Steel Samurai. I see. This time there are three Samurai brothers. Other uh, Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course, the Nickel Samurai. It's a love why in Neo Old Neo uh, in Neo Old Tokyo. I see. Wait. A love what? A love why? This girl, Sayo, works at a tea shop, and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding all uh, colliding over this one girl. Anyway, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet. Times three? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um. Yes, Pearl? Oh, what happens next? I want to know. Miss Sayo, does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does. Isn't she? Every Sunday at 8. 
I'm going to stop watching a kids' masterpiece theater starting this week. I can't believe she's really considering it. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. Jam and Ninja, like the samurai shows, is geared towards kids. <clears throat> it's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall, but became a pretty big pop star anyway. Uh, what? It was a really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy, could he sing. His trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took to the ancient. Uh, he took the ancient world by storm. Uh, a ninja with a bright red guitar, and then the final fight in the uh, in front of his beloved Princess Misola. Jamin versus Muramachi Five. <coughs> Suddenly, our brave hero catches a not so jamming cold the night before Battle Three. Ah, oh, that's too bad for him. Yeah. yeah. This kind of pop music based love story is something uh, high school girls really like. <coughs> Ow. Yeah. Um. Yes, Pearl. What happens next? I want to know. Chairman, the Chairman Ninja, will he be able to sing? What about Princess Misola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, which show should I watch? Hmm. I can't believe she's really considering it. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> so Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her, you know? <laughs> There's sort of a small group of going around about her right now. A rumor? Ah, uh, if you're interested, I'd be glad to share what I know. He's so happy. He looks like a lion that just found his next meal. Matt's younger than me, but you can practically see his star potential. His star potential? I got his autograph the other day. Feels kind of wrong now, doesn't it? I don't care what people say. Matt didn't kill one. I know he did. <laughs> he debuted around the same time as Matt and everything, you know. Really? It started out small. First it was singing contests, then swimming competitions, then it was bowling tournaments, and then it was who could throw the best. New Year's parties, Juan was always trying to one-up Matt. But lately those two were escalating to more and more dangerous things. I thought that no good would come of all of it, so I began to worry. Too bad Juan's story ended so soon. Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Ah, so you are interested in it. Figured you would be. Yeah. I have a weakness for the celebrity gossip, too. Uh, oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, so, take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid Miss Old Bag would read. Alright, let's see here. Jam and Midnight Rendezvous? To the mysterious yet beautiful manager. To the stars, Miss A.A. You, you see now, don't you? What? He is not pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Corita didn't have a manager of his own. Which means if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials A.A. 
Adrian Andrews? E yes, exactly. This is big news. But this seems kind of odd. That woman, the Sanders, <laughs> together with the biggest rival of her client? Ah, it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Mr. Powers looks so happy. Girls is just following along, not having any idea as to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Okay, so I think we can ask Lada. Because then we'll present the tabloid thing. This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous? To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the, uh, beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. A. Ah! Mr. Corita didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. On Guard's manager, Adrian Andrews, she has the initials A.A. A. You saw this article, and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were lurking around Mr. Corita's door last night. What? Yay. You were looking into Mr. Corita and Miss Andrews' affair, weren't you? You got it. I was getting... Gonna get myself a scoop by catching him in this in a secret meeting. But there's already an article of it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What you just say? Her initials are A. -A. What kind of vague thing is that? That ain't no proof. People are gonna want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. So, what? Uh, that's what I was doing. Getting photos. Oh. I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. And then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow. Lotta. Nice journalistic integrity you've got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know. But... The paper I wrote it on... Uh... My note to myself is gone. Your note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They done run off together. I came here to look for my big story. I didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's enough to make a gal go bonkers, I tell you. What's with people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? I have no idea why. The story on the note was probably boldly sly. 
uh, Alana's camera updated in the court record. See what we can do with the old bag. What you witness? All right, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please tell us what you saw. But oh, what a waste! And here I have a perfectly good chance to have a little fun at a youngin's expense. I am a little devil, after all. Um, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? Alright, I'll give you what you want. Here you go. That's... That's Juan's autograph. Yes, it is. And it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. That's me, right? Right? Um, my name's when my name's Wendy Oldbag. That Wendy has to be me, right? Well, let me say Wendy. But somehow, I don't think Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please give it to me. Please let me have it. Please. And uh, uh, um. I can't let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. Then how about an exchange? Wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Fine, Mr. Wright. You win. Wendy Oldbag, ready to open up her heart. All for my dearest Juan. Old bag defeated. Autograph given to Wendy Dearest. I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh no! It was about 10 minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it. Maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part at the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time, you're gonna get it. I'm going to work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. Ungard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I just know what he did to my poor Juan. Uh, I just know he did my poor Juan in. And I just do. That yellow-bellied chicken. Yellow-bellied chicken? I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. Ungard ever do to her to deserve this? What did Ungard do to you to make you so... You don't know. That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick! W what is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about it after we get home, okay? Poor Juan, led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick. What do vials and wild temptress mean? Ah. Um, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldbag has to say for now, okay, girls? So, Miss Oldbank, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved the girl onto Juan on purpose. 
Is it a manager? Why? I thought lawyers were smart. It was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Soltag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. Then do you have proof uh, Mr. Ongard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Uh, of course. Tabloid. Next week! Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbeck have information like that? And where did she get it? Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Eh, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. Evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. What do you mean by the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. At first is the button missing from the victim's chest. Hmm. Button that you found during your body search of Mr. Ungart. Yep, found it in the fold of the Nickel Samurai Special Pants. Um. Uh, and the second one is? Knife in his chest, pal. Fingerprints on the knife found in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, who's are they? You didn't even have to ask, well, Missy, it's obvious. They're meant and guards. <sighs> Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Holtby. Thought so. What do you mean, you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well... And I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck to ten and there's no turning it down. Trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Old Meg silent all, pal. She saw Miss Stern Guard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way. I'm leaking, uh... Okay. We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Mr. Corita? Why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. Suicide? Her name was Celeste Impax. And she was uh, Juan Carita's manager. The victim's manager. But that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was uh, Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman who was both Mr. Carita's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. 
could do suicide. Have some in this case. He wants to know more about her pal. Uh, she was the victim's manager and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. It's been two years since her suicide, and now these those two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, but. Meh. I'm getting sick of this dealing with one foolish idiot after another. M M Miss Von Karma? Oh. Miss Von Karma. You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? No, I need a traitor. Uh, uh, sorry. I don't need a traitor in my midst. Eh. Eh. Get on pain. I do, Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You're no longer needed. Goodbye. That, that's... Oh, wait. Please wait, sir. If I don't get this month's pay, I'll... Quiet. If it weren't for traitors like you... I would have won. Is that what you want to say? Who? Who? That voice. The Edgeworth. It's been a long time, right? <coughs> this person... This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I going to do? Still blaming others when things go wrong? You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. Y you! How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it! You soiled the Von Karma name, dragged it through the mud! You even ran away with your tail between your legs like an ill-bred dog- uh, like the ill-bred dog you are! Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way. Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in, in this country. Y you You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I, I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright, I will see you tomorrow, in court. I, uh, it will be a clinical lesson on the meaning of total victory. <laughs> Same wild mare as, always, uh, as she always was. <clears throat> I thought you, the prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick? I... I never, uh, I, I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you going to run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? The wild mare hasn't given in, given in it seems. So, no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy. Not to mention one side. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What is that supposed to be? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the defini uh, definition of teamwork. It's a true power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous, generous with information. Just what is going on inside his head. A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred Von Karma was still my mentor. A perfect win record is proof of a Von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It's been better for everyone if you... Uh, it did... It did... Been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I 
I see. Then let me ask you something. Why did you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? <clears throat> well, with Francisca, she almost always says, I will defeat you. I will defeat you. The instant she sees me. But... The courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say? Those who think of only their own ego-driven goals. Those kinds of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you are a prodigy, or someone like you, Edgeworth. It looks like there's still yet, uh, still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? Hm. Well, that's enough for now. The time will come, uh, the time when you will see is coming soon enough. Abroad. These deplorable types of actors became popular, I take it. Well, refreshing like a spring breeze is his motto. Refreshing? What's so refreshing about a spring breeze? Sounds like Pollen's not treating him well this year. There's an interesting rumor about this man. You mean the one about Miss Andrews getting close to him? That's a pretty common tabloid fare, isn't it? I don't take things at face value when there's more to be found. Adrian Andrews. She holds a large secret within herself. A uh, secret? You can't help but feel this whole case revolves around her. Hmm. Oh. Music disappeared. Hmm. This woman is another key to solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews, Andrews' mentor a long time ago. She was suddenly called away by a different show and became Juan Corita's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste Impact died. But, but her death was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. But there's still one riddle we've yet to resolve, uh... Okay, one riddle left to solve. Uh, riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note? It just vanished, huh? This impacts death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide. That's when the police began to suspect someone had hidden it. The suicide note? But how do you know Miss Impacts had even written such a note? <clears throat> there was no solid evidence. However, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger. Which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Corita himself. The the victim? He was the one who found her body. Which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Juan, uh, Mr. Corita hit his own manager's suicide note? But why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. Forward now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part 1. Anyway. Part 1. Suicide report and court record. Uh, 
I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. <clears throat> Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here's the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name is Adrian Andrews. M Miss Andrews? Um, what did she do? She she tried to kill herself? She doesn't seem like the kind of person who uh, to try and kill herself. Though. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews? She has a secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. That's what she's really like on the inside. Miss Andrews? Dependent? Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Was this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Jeez. Ugh. Um. Adrian Andrews' is attempt at suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste in Paris. And? And why did Andrew, Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she... Her pillar of strength. Her... Her pillar of strength. Her mentor, Celeste in Paris, was gone forever. That's why. Why? Why would that? This is what they—is uh, this what they call falling someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews attended counseling sessions. She's someone who needs a person in whom she can trust absolutely. Once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to keep them near. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. And that's, that's the nature of her dependency on others. When Celeste Impact suddenly commits, committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then, that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Attempted suicide report and the court record. Appearances can be deceiving. It's such a cliche thing to say, but it's cliche because it's true. Miss Andrews. To think behind that unwavering brave front, she's been hiding this uh, weakness and fear. Okay. Ah, the lawyer dude. What would you find out? Um, well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. I've already told you everything I know, dude. That's my manager. Did you meet her? Uh, yeah. So what do you think? Strong woman, right? And she takes good care of me. You're such a mama's boy. <clears throat> um, what's wrong? How much do you know? Well, what do you mean, how much? Miss Lawyer, I may be your client, but I hope you'll keep yourself out of my personal life. Uh, ah, no, I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. You're in detention. Who in the world are you going to eat with? The security guard? Mr. Nick? Miss Celeste Impact's lady. 
Somehow I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He's so quiet, you could forget he was even there. If he wasn't watching everything. He's pushed up against the wall, kind of like a magnet on a refrigerator. asking me. I have no idea who this person is. I'm um, sorry. Okay, bye. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. But it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisco Von Karma. Miss Von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you. But that's you, uh, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Girls. You're always following after Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting. Little girl. What? What's that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fools every move. So the noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for poor detective, poor detective Gumshoe. <laughs> now then. Let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews? Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed, understood? Uh, Alright. What were those two talking about? <sighs> Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Excuse me. Why was Juan Corita murdered? You ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize that you're putting Mr. Ungard's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answers? Truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corita. You're not that close? That's right. I've never been good at getting, uh, being intimate with another person. Somehow I seriously doubt that. Um. Take So is it the tabloid article? Take you and Mr. Corita had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly t third rate tabloid article. If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people have already bought into this story. Hmm. As to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on our good side. 
In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if uh, there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? Need to get close with Mr. Corita? As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Mr. Corita for this person's sake? Uh, <sighs> Celeste. Celeste Impacts, your mentor. What do you do about Celeste? Miss Impacts, she committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Carita's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Carita so you could find out more about her suicide. You, you have a great imagination. I assume uh, you may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There's no mystery surrounding her death, none. It'd be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Is there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you. you were I don't believe you were completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. Miss Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like, maybe the person who discovered her body. Mr. Corita. Juan? And, Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. Which is why you became intimate with Mr. Corita. I, I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor, however, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I don't even know that- I uh, didn't even know her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give, however. I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste's impact was someone important to you. Miss Andrews, you nearly went through with this, with it too, didn't you? Went through with what? Ending your life? Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, rely on any, uh, relying only on yourself. Yes, I've been very independent since I. Uh, ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie, a facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. That's... You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why... When she passed away, you lost everything. Uh, you lost everything you had. S stop When Celeste passed away so suddenly, like that... I died a death of my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corita of hiding in Miss Impax's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close to him, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. Well, what do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why the victim was killed. Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become uh, the one with the reason to want Mr. Corita dead. M me Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? Yay, we berated this poor woman until, uh, she decided to open up. Ugh.
It's true. I'm a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small, and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I push against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Sanchez. This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine. Uh, mine and mine alone. Uh, I'm sorry. <sighs> you probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Slip passed away, I heard someone had hidden her note. And that someone was Juan Greta. Celeste, without her... Without her, I became scared. Everything... Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corita to recover her suicide, correct? <laughs> Looks like the tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. As for the suicide note, I didn't, and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. I attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. If, if people found out about my weakness, I... I would sooner choose to die than live. Uh, oh, oh, all right. I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. I guess she's the overthinking type. She probably never says anything without carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your discretion. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews. She's been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? I don't quite know. It suddenly appeared in my handbag. What is it? It looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, isn't it? Honestly, I don't remember owning this card. I wonder where you picked it up from. We're not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. In Guard and your capable hands. I think we've gathered about all we can. What about Miss Sigmaya? Is she alright? Oh, pearls. Uh, she looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all. And she's, uh, and has been waking all over the place with me, uh, walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong with her, Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh, no. I'm okay. Really? I'm fine. I really am. You don't look fine to me. Hi, Paris. Hi, Paris. Hi, old bag. Hi, old bag. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impacts' a suicide note? That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's body. Ah, Mr. Nick, the transceiver. Hello, Wright and Co. Law Offices. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering your phone. M Maya, where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone within a few feet of her this whole time. Phew. Which is why I suppose she's absolutely vanished. What? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. 
at any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya, let me hear her. Very well. Ask my... Maya, is that you? Sis, ask my sis. Maya, Maya. Damn it, he cut me off. Miss Sick Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. You're a hopeless one. Um, s sorry. Ah! Mia! I have a message from Maya. So come, ask me anything you want about her. How's Maya? She's safe. For now. The kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe, but... Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called her. I read the note she left. Then I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. Didn't know you could use spirit gem like that. Pretty smart of her. Really smart of her. Ghost telephone, come on. <sighs> kidnapper. The kidnapper. What's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ugh. Maya is locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her? Starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the uh, the only way to go. I have to say, promise. A positive. He promised he wasn't gonna kill me. I'm not going to die. Yes. I wonder if you're with Nick right now. What's this? It feels like there are a lot of glass bottles here. At least they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. There's all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. Kind of ironic that she's saying that. Right, it's locked. Hmm. But this door's lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always use a, uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then click, and magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card around here that I could use. Someone dropped a card here. Looks kind of like a business card, but there's no name on it. Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Ah, that's it. This shell card. If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. All right. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it! Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. To be continued. Saving. Yes! And we will continue this next time, because that feels like a good spot to pick it back up. Cool. So now we just gotta figure out who we are going to be raiding. The code there. And then um I'll send you guys on your way. Uh stream tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing. My start on Dark Souls 2. I haven't done much I, I want to do some grinding for um Hades off stream and I haven't had much of a chance to because I was Playing on the rest server a whole bunch. Um, yeah, at least had fun with it, so that was great. Uh, uh, shoot. Channel. 
Uh, we have. Uh, we have uh, John One, Learbag, That Emil. We haven't rated Kiki the Otter Girl before. They're a YouTuber. Uh, Savage Music Man. Our Stephanie. A1 Twins is on. Junior is on. Let's go over to John. We'll get more adventurous with our raids, I think, tomorrow or next weekend. Again, we need to, we should find some more people. Find new creators. Um, but John one's always a good bet. Cool. Uh, raid message. Oh, I think go through. There we go. Uh, yeah. And we've got our own raid emote, or you can use the raid emote from another channel or the general one that uh, exists on Twitch if you like. But for now, um, made some good headway. I think. This trial is only one day, as far as I know. I might be wrong. Um, I just know it goes for kind of a wild ride. Um, and things get really interesting. They start playing most of the concepts that they've already teased at, so... That'll be good fun. Um, yeah, again, no idea what I'm doing tomorrow, so... We'll just all have to find out together then, shall we? Um... Then you go over to John One, wonderful streamer, does play a lot of uh, retro games and plays some randomizers. I think he's playing Majora's Mask randomizer tonight. If uh, he went with what he posted on Twitter, so have a good night, everyone. Remember to be excellent to each other and take care of yourself.